the playoffs. It's a place where dreams are made and crushed all in the same breath. For the St. John Flames, the roller coaster ride that is the postseason party continues to be both. St. John came within one game of winning it all last year, but the dream died one game short of bringing home the hardware. After an up and down regular season that saw a rash of new faces in and out of the lineup, it has been solidified as their quest for Calder's Cup continues. The task when it began seemed to be a heavy one indeed. The fourth place Flames taking on the first place Lowell Lock Monsters, but the playoffs can bring out the best, and after capturing the first two games on the road, the Flames are back home in the friendly confines of Harbor Station, looking to complete the sweep and move one step closer to a return matchup in this year's Calder Cup Final. The Flames lead the Lock Monsters two games to none and can advance to the Atlantic Division Final with a win tonight. It's the Flames playing host to the Lock Monsters live from Harbor Station on the New Brunswick Channel, TVNB. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Harbor Station for live AHL action for a rare Wednesday night performance here in the playoff run for the uh, St. John Flames. It's a midweek matinee. Of course, the Flames have the brooms out. The fans have the red on. We're all set to go. Uh, a little bit of Calder Cup fever left over from last year. Of course, Flames falling one game short, but a great start to the playoff run for the Flames. Up two games to none. Win two on the road. A thriller in overtime over the weekend. Uh, Martin St. Louis punting the winner. He's pumped. He's primed. He's ready to go. Flames look pretty good right now. Lock Monsters, of course, backed into that corner. They have got to put the W up tonight, or it's bye-bye and onto the golf course. My buddy David Cooper scored the tying goal to put that game into overtime, which you you said your, Martin your buddy Louis, David Cooper. My buddy David Cooper. So <laughs> <laughs> go David Cooper, go. So yeah. anyway, but uh, of note tonight, Eric Charon is in the lineup after suffering what he says was either the flu or food poisoning. He's not sure which. Lost approximately 14 pounds, so he's put the cheeseburgers into him today for tonight's game. No question. When you lose 14 pounds, you got to get ready, especially when you're getting right back out there, haven't played in a couple of days. He's going to be a target out there. Going to have a bullseye on him because the Lock Monsters are going to know. Hey, he hasn't played in a while. He's lost a little bit of weight. Let's see if we can knock him around. Get something generated here. So far, the Flames look extremely good. Cousineau needs to have a big night between the pipes for the Lock Monsters. No question about that. And once again, when you go down the pipes, the other end of the ring, Jean Sebastian Giguere has played well, and he has to have another big night if they want to wrap it up tonight. A lot of familiar faces of note here tonight, Jim. Milan Vigneault is going to be in the attendance tonight, of course, scouting for the Predators series against St. John's, which now is Predators leading two games to one and will play Thursday night, which will be broadcast here on TVNB. And also, uh, Brian Sutter's in attendance, Bill Stewart, former coach of the St. John Flames, in attendance. But we hope to have Brian Sutter and uh, Bill, Stu Bill Stewart for our intermission. So we'll take it back up now to Aaron Kennedy and Steve Ryan for the play by play. It's going to be a physical game. I think that uh, certainly the Lock Monster is going to try to slow down the Flames. I mean, you've got some great speed up there with Barlamoff, Landry, Don McKelly. Certainly Jeff Cowan and Beijing have been a big, big influence on this team last week, and they were uh, very good and playing very aggressive hockey and certainly buzzing around the net. But uh, I think you're going to see uh, Lowell try to clog up that middle. Certainly something that they do well. Their defense is going to really have to get back deep in a hurry to kind of shut down the, the dump in that the Flames will do against a, a trap-like defense and certainly try to uh, pin down uh, the quick forwards that the Flames do have. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, would you please rise and join Chrissy Quinlan for the singing of the American and Canadian National
Chrissy Quinlan with the singing of the national anthems, and we are set for game three of this Eastern Conference quarterfinal between the Lowell Lock Monsters and the St. John Flames. Good evening once again from Harbor Station along with Steve Ryan. I'm Aaron Kennedy. Glad to have you with us for the Calder Cup playoffs. Baxter's Flames hockey on Country 94, and we say hello to those of you watching throughout New Brunswick on TVNB. It's a special edition of Saturday Night Sports since it's not a Saturday. Jean-Sebastien Giguere starts in goal tonight night for the Flames. He is to our left. At the other end, it's Marcel Cousineau for the Lowell Lock Monsters. He's been eliminated in his playoff career twice by the St. John Flames. He's trying to avoid the hat trick here this evening. The referee is 37-year-old Blaine Angus. The linesmen are Chuck McTagg and Derek Doucette. Eric Landry, who has eliminated Marcel Cousineau's teams in each of the last two seasons, last year with the Flames, two years ago with the Hamilton Bulldogs, is set to face it off at center with an ex-Leaf, Mike Kennedy. Angus has the puck in his right hand, and game three is underway. Lee Sorokin, who was nothing short of fabulous over the weekend, controls inside the St. John Blue Line. Flames from left to right. He'll flip it into the Lowell zone. It's cleared by Ray Giroux. Picked up by Kennedy. He skates into the Flames zone on the left wing. Tried to center it for Orsog. Cooper broke it up, and the Flames head up ice. Three on two. Sergei Varlamov over the Lowell line. Varlamov in front. Dama Kelly can't redirect it, and it skips past Kuzino to the corner. Sorokin with a hit at the line on Vladimir Orsog. Puck is kept in. Dama Kelly loses it, and it's played to the right wing by Kennedy. Warren Looney leads the AHL with eight minor penalties in these playoffs. Works it on net. Jiguer makes the save and he hangs on. Good job there by Looning. Moving in on the right wing and trying to angle his way in front. But David Cooper stayed with him every step of the way. Cooper will be my guest for the radio broadcast coming up during our first intermission. Good job by Cooper last week and everybody knows. Uh, big goal. David Cooper's played very, very well as of late. Everybody was on David Cooper's uh, case really from uh, I guess probably December onward and uh, in the last month or so he's played very strong move the puck up the ice has been been involved certainly has got some big goals for this hockey team very good on the power play and certainly David Cooper has taken over as uh, one of the leaders of this hockey team and he will actually admit that he was not playing well during the season and said the fans had every right to be sure. on him but he thinks that he has improved dramatically and he is certainly correct in that assessment from the faceoff, the Lock Monsters control. Crowley from the left point bounces it in behind the St. John net. Ryan Huska, who played game one but not game two, controls, loses it. Crowley from the point with his shot, knocked down in front. Belak picks it up for St. John and sends it to the Lowell line. The Lock Monsters nearly had too many men on the ice. Huska heads off, and Craig Sharon joins his normal line mates, Dane Jackson and Sean Haggerty. Haggerty appearing on a milk carton near you sometime soon. He was invisible. During the two games in Lowell, he's a much better player than he's shown so far. Here's Clark moving into the Lowell zone. Shot steered away by Cousineau. Healthy bounce off the end boards. It's knocked away by Vladimir Shabaturkin. Shabaturkin pressured by Clark, moves it behind the Lowell net. We've played a minute and 25 seconds of game three. There's no score. Now Ray Schultz back in the Lowell lineup for the first time in the series. Plays it to Haggerty, who dumps it into the St. John zone. Jaguar leaves it behind the net for Eric Chiron, who's in the lineup. Loses the puck. It's centered. Schultz moving in. Turns it over, and here come the Flames. It's a three-on-one. Beja, Cowan, and Chiron. Beja, shot saved. Beja on the rebound. Flipped it wide as Chiron is taken into the Lowell net by his numerical counterpart, Ray Schultz, both of whom wear number three and are playing... For the first time in the series, Sharon tonight is playing his 56th career game in the Calder Cup playoffs. No other flame has more AHL playoff experience. And now Sharon is getting a little physical with, I believe that's Dane Jackson. Jackson was assessed a match penalty on Friday night along with Steve Bejean. We thought they would be suspended for game two, but those penalties were rescinded by the American Hockey League a couple of hours prior to game time on Saturday afternoon, and we're told that the Lock Monsters weren't thrilled that the Flames actually delivered that tape 90 miles south to Springfield, Massachusetts, so that a decision could be rendered. 
doesn't say a lot for your captain, Dane Jackson, when the Lock Monsters thought that was a good trade-off. <laughs> and that is certainly a compliment to Steve Bejan, the it. rookie, who was just phenomenal on the face-offs on Friday night. He was by far the Flames' best centerman. So the Lock Monsters thought that, hmm, they got rid of Bejan. That was a good deal for game two. And they weren't thrilled. And certainly if you're Dane Jackson and you hear that your team is sour, that you're not suspended. Doesn't bode well. Unbelievable. That says, our, uh, boy, it speaks volumes for Steve Bejan. Chris Clark, Steve Bejan, Jeff Cowan have been playing so well as of late. We have coincidental penalties here, roughing minors against the captains, Jackson and Sharon. Eric Sharon left Lowell on Saturday afternoon, drove to Boston, and then flew home, and he got stuck in Halifax for a while. Bad storm down there. The power went out a couple of times in the airport, and he was quite concerned for his physical well-being as he was trying to make his way home from Boston. I said, wouldn't it have been funny if the team had gotten home earlier than you after busing home? And he said, yeah, that, that would have been just a laugh riot. Real, real funny. Yeah, real beauty. Uh, give Eric Sharon a lot of credit. Uh, back here tonight, lost a lot of weight. Boy, this team needs him. He's played so well as of late, as we've talked about, and uh, certainly the captain is playing uh, very well and leading this team by example. There's no score. Four skaters aside here from the faceoff in the Lowell zone. Dean Malcock controls the puck. Malcock flings it ahead on the right side. Sorokin ties up his man in the neutral zone. That was Orsog. Sorokin has the puck back inside the St. John blue line. Two minutes gone. Shots are even at two. Sorokin for the Flames. Gives it to Travis Brigley. Scored the game-winning goal in game one. He dumps it to the lower line. It was blocked by Ray Giroux. Good-looking rookie from Yale who played very well over the weekend. Now Malcock with a shot partially blocked by Sorokin. Picked up by Salawi. He'll move it for Belak. He swings it behind the goal for Sorokin. Flames from left to right. Sorokin is content to chip it off the boards down ice. Icing is waved off as Giroux is back to pick it up behind the goal. Brigley had his stick snapped in half as Malcock slashed it right out of his hands. Now Sharon, without question, Lowell's best player in the series, a hit for Orsog, looking to split the defense, but Cooper played it away. Landry brings it up ice through the neutral zone, a hit for Dama Kelly, over the Lowell line, a drop for Cooper was off the mark. Scoville controls outside the Lowell blue line. Three minutes gone in a scoreless first period of game three. The Flames looking for the sweep. The Lock Monsters looking to extend their stay in southern New Brunswick to a fourth game on Friday. Scoville for Landry. One against two at the Lowell line. Looning knocked the stick out of his hands. And Eric Cairns, who thought he had the game winner in game two, he had the go-ahead goal with about three minutes to play. And then that went down the toilet as the Flames rallied for the win. Cairns, 6'5", 230-pound defenseman out there at the left point. He has the puck, winds, fires wide, picked up off the end boards, diving for that Boy, puck. Boy, way too far there. Was looning. But Dom Kelly comes up with it, and he brings it up ice. Plays it into the Lowell zone. And it's controlled there by Cairns. He gave it away. Dom Kelly moving in. Wrist shot, pad save by Marcel Cousineau. And the puck is played off the boards to the neutral zone. Teams at full strength as the captains, Charon and Jackson, leave the box. Here's Landry into the Lowell zone on the left side, chipping it in front. Cousineau makes the glove save, and he will hold on. Not a bad start to this one, game number three in this series. There is no score. St. John out shooting Lowell, 4-2. I think you can expect uh, a lot from Nat Dominic Kelly tonight, the number 17, the speedy winger for the Flames, back down after a pretty good stint with Calgary. Lots of NHL types in the audience tonight. Brian Sutter and Rick Preston are here from Calgary, and certainly... Dom Kelly wants to impress somebody. Uh, we've loved having him here in his stay, but certainly Nat has eyes on the NHL, whether it's with Calgary or some other organization. He certainly uh, wants to make a, a good impression here tonight. Eavesdropping on Frank Anzalone's pregame speech to his troops this morning, and he said, we want to throw some adversity at the Flames early on, and he used the Maple Leaf analogy from last night. They're a team that did not give up, even though they fell behind early. But Anzalone telling his team that they can ill afford to come from behind. They need the first goal of the game. And here's Jackson looking for it, stepping in front of the St. John goal, but losing the handle. And Varlamov, quick counter strike for the Flames ahead for Sorkin, moving in with a shot saved by Cousineau. And obviously, Marcel is on his game here early on, as he was on Saturday night. You could not fault him for the tying goal, nor could you fault him on the overtime winner. He made a spectacular play in poking the puck away from Lee Sorkin. Unfortunately, Martin St. Louis was right 
in the high slot, and he fired it into the open net to give the Flames the victory. I was talking to Martin yesterday, and I said, your eyes must have been as big as saucers, and he said, no question, I like open nets, and he's the type of player who's not going to miss the open net, and that gave the Flames the victory in game two. But Frank Anzalone stressing the importance of the first goal, and we've talked about that all season long as far as the lock monsters are concerned. In the regular season, when they scored first, they were able to win 26 of their 33 victories. So the first goal is very, very big. They like to play that trap style, and certainly you can't think defense if you're behind in the game. Well, that's the type of game that these guys play, and uh, they're not, they don't have that many gifted goals. Of course, certainly guys that can put the puck in the net, but uh, really uh, lines one through three really are, uh, are just above average, and that'll be about it. The Lock Monsters control in their own zone. It's Nick Baudouin. Stripped of the puck by Salloway. He tried to get it to Alan Eglin, who's lost his helmet. He did that a couple of times on the weekend. Now Buddy Wallace plays it wide of the St. John net. Looning in the right corner. In behind the goal for Nick Baudouin. Eglin took it away and brings it up ice for St. John. Pass for Brigley. Deflected into the Lowell zone, and this will be an icing as Cairns is back for the touch. We're still scoreless. 15-15 remaining in period number one. Don't forget game four in the Eastern Conference quarterfinal series between Fredericton and St. John's is necessary. It'll be played tomorrow night at 7.30 at the Aiken University Center in Fredericton, and that game will also be televised here on TVNB. If a fourth game in this series is necessary, it'll be played here at Harbor Station Friday night at 7. Baxter's Flames Hockey, the Calder Cup playoffs, will begin with the pregame show at 6.45. If the Flames win tonight, we don't know when they'll play next, mm. although we do know it'll be on the road, either in Fredericton or in St. John's. Face off to the right of Jean-Sebastien Giguere, won by Eglin. Salloway with three goals in the series, cuts in behind the net, turns it over to Dmitry Nabokov. His shot just skipped wide. Pinching in his cairns, but Eglin knocked it away. Here comes the speedy Salloway into the Lowell zone. It's whacked away into the corner by Ted Crowley. Now in there to help out is Travis Brigley. Salloway tied up in the corner. Puck is loose. Brigley lost his stick, then gets it back. Now Salloway working it along the end boards. Finally, it comes loose to Travis Brigley to the point it bounces past Eglund and back to the St. John Blue Line. Five and a half minutes gone, scoreless first period. Eglin turns it over, moving in is Kennedy. Scoville forces him to the right corner. Now Nabokov loses it to Eglin. Eglin swings it off the boards and sends it down ice. Icing is again waved off by linesman Chuck McTagg. Ray Giroux is back to pick it up for Lowell. Giroux sends it to Looning. Looning bumped by Clark, feeds it ahead for Baudouin to the St. John line, stripped by Belak. Belak hustles after it into the neutral zone, now into Lowell territory. Belak in behind the net, tried to center it. Clark battling in front with Schultz. Schultz sends it off the boards. Cowan knocks it down. Cowan in behind the net, wrap around, save! Cousineau, Cowan on the rebound. Cousineau thought he had the puck pinned. It's loose in behind the Lowell net, which has come dislodged. So we get a whistle with 13.46 remaining in the opening period, and the game is still scoreless. Oh, good job by that line again, and these guys go hard. They play very physical. I'm talking about Bejan, Hart, and Cowan. And uh, last weekend, a good example, as you mentioned, Aaron, and Brad, you were talking about Bejan gets everything in sight, and Jeff Cowan is very physical game also. And uh, that's the way these guys can be very, very effective. All good skaters, very good skaters, the three of them. Uh, Hart coming in this year, in his rookie year, started out with a bunch of assists, uh, couldn't uh, really find the mesh, but uh, has played very, very well on this line of game as of late. In playoff style hockey, this is where these guys really, really can. Five to two are the shots in favor of the St. John Flames. There are two other Calder Cup playoff games tonight. Their later starts, Kentucky at Hershey and Albany at Hamilton in Western Conference quarterfinals. Those series are tied at one game apiece. Two teams have already advanced, advanced to the second round of the playoffs. Philadelphia Phantoms and the Rochester Americans disposing of Cincinnati and Adirondack in three straight games respectively. Just a horrible crowd in Cincinnati for game three of that series. 1,118. Gaetan Royer bumps Schultz off the faceoff. Flames got a shot away and the Lock Monsters come up with it. Baudouin turns it over to Sharon, the neutral zone. Then Sharon got tripped up by Schultz. He stuck the knee out 
and trips Whoops. Sharon. And that'll be a penalty against Ray Schultz. Now Frederick Oduya oh. comes in and roughs up Schultz. Royer does as well. Oduya has had more ice time in this game with that shift than he had on Saturday night. He did not play at all. And certainly, you can expect that Oduya will get more ice time tonight, especially if the Flames were able to get a lead and they're trying to hang on in the late stages of the game. If things perhaps start to get a little out of hand, but Oduya here may very well have negated a St. John power play. Not a good play by Frederick Oduya, and that's you want to get the power play early. That's what we were talking about in the pregame show, really jump on this team early and uh, try to get a goal early and really shut them down. But uh, not a good play by Oduya. You're sticking up for your teammate, sure, but uh, Eric Sharon can take care of himself. And Blaine Angus was already going to make the call on Ray Schultz. And Oduya is going to accompany him to the penalty box. I think the problem was, from a flame well, perspective, the, the yep, knee sure. came out. Yep. And that's why they weren't pleased with their captain and team leader, best defenseman. Absolutely. Someone is going after his knee. Tempers can flare. So it will be coincidental minors here. Schultz for tripping. And Oduya is a minor for roughing. 6.26 the time, so he's full play. Four skaters aside for the second time. Eric Sharon wrapped up the regular season with points in four straight games. He was the team's best defenseman this year. Played 11 games in Calgary, no goals, one assist, and 14 penalty minutes. Well, Rico's at a crossroads in his career right now. Certainly this team, he's very valuable to this team. Let's face it, he's a, he's a leader, he's their captain. The young defense that this team does uh, have looks up to Eric Chiron, and certainly we'd like to have Eric Chiron back here for a couple more years, but uh, certainly we, we would like to see him uh, get a break and maybe land on an NHL team somewhere uh, where he gets some uh, NHL time. Salowy, Varlamov, Sorkin, and Chiron on the ice for St. John. Orsog, Malcock, Chiron, and Giroux for the Lock Monsters. Of course, Chiron and Chiron are of no relation. They're not even from the same country. St. Louis moving in with a weak shot blocked by Malcock. St. Louis gets it back shot, stick save Cousineau, and Orsog brings it up ice for the Lock Monsters. Orsog has played well in this series, has nothing to show for it, really. He gets the puck into the flame zone, delayed offside. Sorokin will bring it back the other way. Stripped by Craig Chiron, but Eric Chiron is able to whack it away from him. Eric Chiron for St. John in his own zone, plays it for Varlamov. Varlamov knocked down by Orsog. Chiron comes up with it, and he'll move it back on the left wing for Varlamov. He'll drop it for Sorokin. He joins the rush and shoots it in. It's knocked down and played away by Malcock. A minute 10 to go in the coincidental minors. As Cooper gives it ahead to Nat Domichelli, across for Landry, moving into the right corner. Landry cuts in behind the low net, centers it. Domichelli, the shot off the end boards, and a healthy bounce in front. It's flipped down ice by Dmitry Nabokov. Domichelli from point blank range ripped it, and I do mean ripped it, over the net. Eric Cairns whacks Eric Landry. That's going to be a penalty. Jiguer to the bench. Cooper brings it to center. He'll play it into the Lowell zone, and play is stopped. And the Flames are going to have a four-on-three power play for 37 seconds, and then a five-on-four for a minute 23. Well, the Flames are going to get a break here, and uh, Lowell taking a penalty, and this is what we talked about earlier, unnecessary penalties, really an unnecessary penalty right there by Eric Cairns. He is a, a bit of a rough guy and he'll he'll play it tough and uh, certainly got the big goal last week uh, last weekend to give the Lock Monsters a lead in the third period but uh, he plays a pretty aggressive style hockey taking a penalty here with 12-11 left in the first period. No score so far but the Flames hoping to capitalize on this power play. Slashing against Cairns 749 is the time in Lowell the Flames were 4 of 13 with the man advantage and they scored three of their four goals on Saturday night on the power play. Speaking a moment ago about Eric Chiron and Craig Chiron, how they're from different countries. Craig Chiron is an American from Northeastern Massachusetts and Eric Chiron, the Flames captain, is from Verdun, Quebec. Dama Kelly, Clark, Salloway, Cooper, the quartet for Rick Vive on this four on three power play. Face-off 
At the top of the right wing circle in the Lowell zone, Dama Kelly wins the draw. Cooper controls, gets it to Dama Kelly. Top of the right circle, back to Cooper. Dama Kelly again for Cooper. Left circle, Salloway. Salloway stripped of the puck by Mike Kennedy, who's able to clear it down ice. He, Huska, and Giroux are the Lowell penalty killers. No score here, first period in game three at Harbor Station. Dama Kelly wheels through center, plays it for Clark. He's into the Lowell zone. Clark moves into the corner, moves behind the neck, gives it to Dama Kelly, into the slot for David Cooper. Cooper waiting, looking, Dama Kelly back to Cooper. Dama Kelly one, timer! And he blasted that one wide. The first penalties are over. It's a five on four for the next minute 15. And Lowell will clear it into the seats. That was Ray Schultz getting to that puck first and firing it into the seats behind the Lowell bench. A minute 13 to go in the penalty to Cairns. 11.25 to go in the opening period. No score. 7-2. St. John out shooting the Lock Monsters. We talked about how important goaltending is. Certainly both teams very well equipped with two good goaltenders. Marcel Cousineau did a great job the last Saturday night throwing his body every which way. The Flames coming out, of course, with the overtime win, but gives you Garrett credit, played well from your call on Friday night, and certainly he had a couple of uh, big, big, large saves to kind of turn the tide of that game, and uh, both goaltenders, uh, you know, this is, this is where they thrive. Face off is to Cousineau's left. Every time Cousineau even looks at the puck in Lowell, the crowd chants, Coos. They love him. As much of a crowd of 2,000 people can create a chant, of course. Bad crowds in Lowell on the weekend. Sorkin drops it to Cooper at the St. John line. He'll fling it ahead to Sergei Varlamov. Lock Monsters bottling up the neutral zone. Now Landry brings it into the Lowell zone, drops it for Brigley. He'll play it to the right corner. Varlamov skates after it in front, looking for Landry. Kuzino whacked it away with the paddle of the stick. Landry to the left point. Sorkin can't keep in. 37 seconds in the power play. Cooper in the neutral zone. Back pedals to his own line. Moves it for Landry. Cross ice for Sorokin. He'll blast it in. It rims around the boards into the right corner. Varlamov is the first one on it. He gets it deep for Eric Landry. He turns it over to Craig Sharon. He's pestered by Varlamov, but he's able to get it out. And then he whacks Varlamov in the back for good measure. 15 seconds in the penalty. Sorokin heads up ice flames from left to right. He gets it to Saloui, and that's whacked away by Haggerty. Jaeger leaves it behind the goal for Eric Chiron. Chiron, left side for Saloui. Penalty over, teams at full strength. Saloui into the left corner, now behind the low net. Petrovicki gets it to Alan Eglin. Eglin looking in front for Scoville. Scoville with a wrist shot, loose in front. Eglin scores! up the loose puck at the side of the Lowell net and flips it shelf past Cousineau. Flames lead one to nothing. Good job by Daryl Scoville of keeping that puck in and it going towards the net as he was turning away from the net. Kept the puck in, put it on net and Alan Eglin picking up the rebound and going absolutely roof on Marcel Cousineau. Good job, good shot by uh, Eglin. Good job by Scoville keeping the puck in. Flames jump into that one nothing lead. Very, very important one nothing lead. Ten minutes even, the time of the goal for Alan Eglund, a late season pickup coming over what a pick up. just cool. prior to the trading deadline from the Orlando Solar Bears of the International League. Eglund hasn't been feeling all that well, did not skate yesterday, didn't even take the morning skate today, and was listed as questionable yeah. until he came off the ice after the warm-up and gave Rick Vive the thumbs up sign. Boy, you got to love him, the way he plays. Everyone talked about how tough he played last weekend, and that's an important part of this team, to be able to be aggressive. Here's Cairns. Sends it into the St. John zone. Scoville will take it from Giguere. So the Flames have that one nothing lead. We'll have to see how the Lock Monsters respond to this adversity. Scoville and Petrovicki the assists on Eglin's first of the postseason at the 10-minute mark. Here's Royer in front, shot! Saved by Cousineau, he was looking back into the net. And he lets out a sigh of relief when he realized that the puck wasn't in the cage, it was underneath his pads. But Gaetan Royer scooping up that loose puck in the right circle 
And he gave Cousineau an anxious moment. Boy, he's got a heavy shot, Gaetan Royer. Certainly a tough character, pretty good skater. Noticed him first over on the rock over in Newfoundland. A couple of howitzers he let go. He certainly has uh, got good velocity on that shot, but uh, someone else that's been out there uh, in this last shift and got an assist on the goal, Ron Petrovicki, has done a great job as of late when he's been uh, in the lineup. Certainly he's been in the lineup, just hasn't played a heck of a lot, but uh, Petrovicki's done a good job going hard to the net, a good shot, and uh, working very hard out there. Scored a lot of points in junior last year, but uh, Petrovicki really coming to play here again tonight. He was seldom used on Saturday mm -hmm. night, but he was on the ice in the last minute when Ted Crowley took the hooking penalty. That resulted in the power play goal that forced the yeah. overtime. You guys talked about the fact that he didn't play and might have some fresh legs, and uh, certainly Petrovicki, uh, if, if uh, you've got to sit anybody out, you certainly hate to sit him down. He's played so well as of late, but uh, boy, the numbers are tough with this team. Everyone playing so well right now. Nick Baudouin from the left circle in the St. John's zone, shot blocked by oh. Cooper. There'll be another penalty against Frederick Oduya yep. for dragging down Vladimir Shebaturkin. Kuzino scampers to the bench. The Lock Monsters have the extra skater on the ice, and they have the puck back in their own zone. Shebaturkin still covered in snow after falling to the ice a moment ago. Nine minutes remaining in the opening period. This is a lengthy delayed penalty, which is now blown down. There'll be a tripping call against Frederick Oduya. 11.06 is the time. Obstruction tripping technically is the call if you are keeping score. Well, Oduya hauling down the low player in front, and uh, that happens. That's the type of game that Oduya plays. He's physical. He'll take the odd penalty. Certainly nice to have his physical presence back there. The complexity of this team, especially on the defense, has changed so dramatically. It's great to have Eric Sharon back, and, and no one will deny that. But, boy, Lee Sorkin, and you've talked about it, Aaron, how well he played last weekend. Certainly he's going to give you some offense, but, boy, gives you that physical presence. Certainly Wade Belak with his size and strength. It's great to have him back there. And this is a different D than we've seen uh, throughout most of the year, a, a physical defense now that actually can move the puck up the ice. Lowell's PP could be filed under the letter B over the weekend. Mm -hmm. It was brutal. One power play goal in 19 chances. 11.06, the time of the obstruction tripping penalty against Oduya. Lowell with its first power play of the evening, and Nat Domichelli stops the Monsters in their tracks at the St. John Blue Line and backhands it down ice. Flames with a 1-0 lead on the goal by Alan Eglin. Domichelli stops them again, kicks it into Lowell territory. Landry... Meanders in there deep. Landry is bumped along the end boards by Giroux. Landry gave him a whack in the face with his left hand, just for good measure, as Craig Sharon carries over the St. John line. He works it in behind the net. Kennedy hammered into the end boards by Sharon. Giroux from the point, shot. Jiguer the save, and Kennedy gets hammered off the save by Eric Sharon. Kennedy complaining to referee Blaine Angus. But he's been around long enough Absolutely. to know if you're parked in front of the netminder, you're going to get hacked and whacked. Good shot by Giroux. Great-looking rookie from Yale. Yeah. He scored the first low goal of the series on Friday night, and he's going to be a good one. He just put his head down and let that one fly from the left point with heavy traffic in front. You talked earlier about the people in attendance tonight. Alain Vigneault, Ray Jean Oul, Mario Tremblay, Roly Melanson, and Pierre Mondu from the Montreal organization. Bill Waters is here from the Leafs. Nick Polano, Brian Sutter, Rich Preston from Calgary. Bill Stewart, the head coach of the New York Islanders, the parent club of the Lock Monsters, also in attendance tonight. Alain Vigneault was beside me last night in the press box at the Aiken Center. He signed about 200 autographs. So I didn't <laughs> sign any. Sorkin Surprising. fires the puck down ice. Yeah, no family members in attendance last <laughs> night, that's why. Eight minutes remaining in the first period. Flames with a one to nothing lead. Incidentally, Ray Jean Oul, Mario Tremblay, Pierre Mondu, and Roly Melanson, 16 Stanley Cup rings amongst mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Heavy fingers there. Giroux, back in the Lowell zone, controls. Lock monsters from right to left. Craig Sharon, their leading scorer during the regular season. Pestered by Eglund every stride of the way, gets it in deep, however. Jiguer leaves it for Sorkin, he'll play it off the boards. Sharon keeps it in with his left skate. Haggerty, back to Sharon. Back to Haggerty on the right side for Sharon. High slot with a shot. Ooh. That one was partially blocked by Sorkin, who threw his body in Block. front of it, and Poor then play. he's able to clear. Sorkin says when you win, those injuries that you have to ice down just don't hurt as bad as they do when you lose in the playoffs. Warren Looney, into the right corner. Buck is in behind the net. It's swept to the left point. Sheba Turkin. Holds in, flips it along the boards. Orsog works it in behind the net. Sharon flips it away from Looning. 
And Beijing will clear. Penalty to Oduya is over. Make the Monsters 0 for 1 with the power play tonight, 1 for 20 in the series. And you don't win many playoff series with those kind of numbers. Not a chance. Give the Flames good credit, though. Set up a good box and played uh, very spirited deep. Buck is in behind the St. John net. Belak is able to outrace Huska. And we have an icing against the Lock Monsters. And we have a scrum after the whistle as we have Steve Bejean roughing it up with Vladimir Orsog. Now as linesman Chuck McTagg got involved, Orsog got a little braver and tried to punch Steve Bejean. We'll have some penalties. We'll take a break, 6.37 remaining in the first. It's St. John 1, Lowell nothing. These are the Calder Cup playoffs. Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. has been assessed to Jeff Cowan roughing at 13.23. So the Flames will be short-handed. I'm not sure why the face-off doesn't come outside the Lowell blue line after the Flames took a penalty off that icing call, but nevertheless the face-off is deep in the Lowell zone. And the Lock Monsters have their second consecutive power play. Crowley backhands it in behind his net. And the Lock Monsters will bring it up ice. Craig Sharon can't spot Looning with the pass. It's into the St. John end. Belak bumps with Looning in behind the St. John goal. Sharon plays it. Orsog controls in the right corner to the point. Giroux shot wide. Picked up by Dama Kelly. He hits Ted Crowley and Landry is able to clear. Six minutes remaining in the first. And the Flames get a round of applause for the extra effort there. Big hit by Dama Kelly. Giroux fires it in. It's off the end glass, bounces towards the net. Jaeger flips it along the boards, and Eglin will fire it down ice. One to nothing, St. John leads. A minute seven to go in the penalty to Jeff Cowan. Back to pick it up. It's Crowley. Crowley, now for Mike Kennedy. He races through the neutral zone to the St. John line, shoots it into the right corner. It bounces along the left wing boards. Jackson in behind the net, looking for Kennedy. It comes back to Jackson to the left point. Sheba Turkin gets it now for Crowley. He'll chip it into the right corner. Haggerty behind the net. Kennedy plays it back along the board. Sheba Turkin with a shot. Jigger the save. Rebound. Backhanded attempt by Kennedy is played away by the Flames defense. 30 seconds in the power play. Landry. In the neutral zone, fires it in behind the Lowell goal. Kuzino will leave it for Vladimir Shebaturkin. Lowell from our right to left. Shebaturkin into the St. John zone on the left wing boards. Bounces it in behind the net. Sorokin with a chance to clear. Takes advantage and dumps it all the way down. Just a dozen seconds left in the penalty to Cowan. One to nothing, St. John leads. Giroux back in his own zone. Hustles into the St. John end. Giroux with a shot. Steered away by Giguere. Dama Kelly has it back. Hands it ahead. Knocked down by Buddy Wallace. Point shot by Malcock is wide. As Mater was knocked down in front by Belak. Cowan out of the box. Moving two on two with Dama Kelly. Cowan tried to split the defense. But Malcock is able to knock it away. Cowan gets it back along the left wing boards. In behind the net. Dama Kelly works it free for Bejan. Bejan. Elbowed against the end boards by Wallace. Bejan extricates himself. Bejan cuts back in behind the net. Bejan turns, shoots just wide. Great effort by Bejan coming out on the backhand, switching to the forehand, and just missing the right post. Icing is the call here against Lowell as Sharon out hustles Mike Mater and another scrum. And these are pretty much mandatory now after every whistle in game three. Of these Calder Cup playoffs, the Flames, with a win, can eliminate the Lock Monsters as Beijing goes after... Not sure who that is at this point. Eric Cairns, I think. Although it's always difficult to tell 
It was a treat watching yeah, Lowell absolutely. in Lowell yeah. because they had their white uniforms on over the weekend. <laughs> Can't see these We were numbers. hoping for reverse sweater nights here at Harbor Station because at home their unis are actually some of the better ones in the league. But on the road, they are just awful. But that is indeed Eric Cairns who was jostling with Steve Bejan and will have further penalties here from uh, Blaine Angus. Well, you want to talk about someone that commands a lot of respect, Eric Chiron. Mater went in second time uh, that Chiron, once he drew a penalty on, but Mater coming in late and taking the hit on Eric Chiron after the icing and everybody coming to Chiron's rescue. And really that speaks volumes for number three, the captain, Eric Chiron. Certainly everybody looks up to him on this team and uh, you don't want to, uh, nobody wants to see uh, Chiron get hurt or even hit. And uh, really, once again, it speaks volumes for the uh, captain's presence. Hot fudge, caramel, pecans, DQ soft serve. It's the new pecan mudslide treat at Dairy Queen. 50 cents from each pecan mudslide sale will be donated to the IWK Children's Hospital in Halifax. It's the new pecan mudslide treat available now at Dairy Queen. Cairns roughing in a misconduct, Beijing roughing at the 16 minute mark. The teams will play. Four skaters aside, St. John with the lead, one to nothing on the goal by Alan Eglin on a rebound of a Daryl Scoville shot. Ronald Petrovicki with the other assist at the 10 minute mark. Coming up during our first intermission, we'll hear from David Cooper and we'll get a sports update from Andy LaRue. Aaron Kennedy and Steve Ryan at Harbor Station. Barry Johnson and Jim Hennessy are your intermission hosts on TVNB and a special edition of Saturday Night Sports. Flames with the one to nothing lead. Face off coming up to the left of Marcel Cousineau. He has made eight saves at the other end. Jean-Sebastien Giguere, who has yet to lose against the Lowell Lock Monsters, has made seven saves. Giguere has posted four consecutive wins against Lowell, two in the regular season and the first two games of this series. Salo, he's sorry. Been tough. He's been tough on the forwards really coming back to the Flames and really not letting Lowell get anything going. And uh, really, really shows it there by the shot total. Salo, Varlamov, Scoville, and Sorokin are on the ice for St. John. The Lock Monsters have it. They've got Kennedy, Nabokov, Schultz, and Shebaturkin. Shebaturkin has the puck, and he'll bring it up ice. He gets it to Nabokov, who backhands it into the St. John zone. Jaguar will play it behind the net for Daryl Scoville. Scoville. Plays it off the board, saint -Louis redirects it all the way down ice. Three and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. One to nothing, St. John. Kennedy in his own zone, flips it ahead. Nabokov gives it to Sheba Turkin. He traipses over the St. John line, loses it. Sorokin backhands it behind the goal, and saint will turn it up ice for St. John. Four on four, saint with some room. Tried to spot Sorokin on the left side. Sorokin now has it, backhands it towards the Lowell net. Sheba Turkin will give it to Ray Schultz. Schultz pushes it past saint -Louis to center. Kennedy gets by Cooper. Kennedy taken out by Sorokin. The trailer is Nabokov. Nabokov in the left corner, moves it in behind the net. Sorokin works it for David Cooper. And here come the Flames three on two. saint to the Lowell line, drops it for Cooper. Cooper moving in, shot! That one was deflected by Crowley out of play with 2.49 remaining in the opening period and the Flames leading one to nothing. Dmitry Nabokov wearing number 19 for Lowell, making his way to the bench for a break. He's the guy that was traded from the Chicago organization for Jean-Pierre Dumas. And I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but Dumas played 24 games this year for the Blackhawks. He developed what the Blackhawks termed a strained back in the last week of the season, which prevented him from playing 25 games, which would take him out of Calder Trophy running for next season. He is the early favorite after playing extremely well in the AHL and then getting a taste in the NHL with the Blackhawks. And the Blackhawks team that failed to make the playoffs again this year, looking for something positive, a nice spin. So Dmitry Nabokov, who was traded for Jean-Pierre Dumas, has a lot of pressure put on him here in this Islander organization because right now it looks like a bad deal uh, for Mike Milbury. Yeah, and that's been said on a couple of major networks. Uh, Nabokov not looking that good, but Dumont and the Blackhawks looking a lot better down the stretch. Dumont having a couple of good multiple point games. Nat Domichelli drops it for Eric Chiron. Lauren Mollican has the interim removed from the interim coach designation. Good man who used to coach the Hamilton Bulldogs in the AHL. 
Two minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the opening period. 15 seconds to go in the coincidental penalties. Flames with a one to nothing lead. Cooper in his own zone. Fans getting a little antsy, but they must keep in mind that it's their team that's ahead one to nothing and leading the series two to nothing. So they might want to cut them some slack. Here's Sharon, nearly coughing it up in his own zone to Dama Kelly, but the puck is played away to center. Bilak sends it back into the Lowell zone. Teams are at full strength. Giroux behind his own net, brings it ahead. Giroux steps away from Allen Eglund and fires it in. It hit Bilak in the chest, picked up by Looning. Looning down low. Baudouin tried to center it. It ends up in the right corner. Huska turns it over to Lee Sorokin, and he'll blast it off the boards to center. Schultz for Looning. He cuts back into his own zone, steps in front of the net, and plays it in behind the goal. It skips away from Schultz. It's picked up by Baudouin. He can't get it out. Wrigley knocks it down, steps away from Huska, and Petrovicki shoots it behind the lower goal. 69 seconds to skate in the first. Flames with a one to nothing lead. Baudouin hounded by Petrovicki in the neutral zone. Eglin comes up with the puck. He plays it to the lower line. Now Kennedy brings it ahead, and he'll fire it in. Jaeger emerges from the crease, leaves it behind the goal for Scoville. Left side for Brigley. Bejan was tripped up. There'll be an obstruction penalty against Kennedy. Brigley with a shot. It's off the end glass. Kept in at the line by Landry. Now the Lock Monsters gain possession and play is stopped. Kennedy will head off for obstruction hooking at 19-16. Good job by the Flames of breaking out using that speed. And sometimes that speed will create a penalty as Mike Kennedy hauled down the Flames player. And we're going to go on the power play. 43 seconds left here in the first, first period. Already up 1-0. And uh, boy. Face off and uh, key 43 seconds left here as the Flames, if they can get a successful pl uh, power play going here, could jump into a 2 nothing lead, and that certainly would have to play on Frank Anzalone and his troops being down 2 nothing in the series, and certainly it could be down 2 nothing here at the end of the one. Construction hooking against Kennedy, 19-16, power play number two for the St. John Flames. They lead the game 1 to nothing. they lead the series 2 to nothing. Landry, Varlamov, Dama Kelly, Cooper, and Salloway. Sharon, Huska, Malcock, and Giroux, the penalty killers. Malcock looks to clear. It hit the linesman set. Cooper gets it to Landry on the right wing boards. Landry moves it for Dama Kelly. Landry got knocked down by Malcock. Dama Kelly took the shot, and Cousineau makes the save and covers up. Landry got flattened there by Dean Malcock, who took some extra liberties with his team already shorthanded, sensing that perhaps Angus would not make that call, and he was correct in that assessment. Good job by Dom Kelly moving to the middle. He's got the shot, and certainly he is the key. You want to get him the puck. Get a good shot from anywhere in the slot, and certainly you want to get Barlamov with the soft hands down low or anywhere near the net. This is a good trio, a good combination. And certainly with David Cooper out there, who really has done a great job on the power play. Flames looking to jump into a 2-0 lead. An even 32 seconds remaining in the opening period. Another draw to Cousineau's left. Landry against Sharon. Landry wins it again. Landry kicks it to Cooper. Cooper moving in. Shot save. Cousineau no rebound. Good job once again. Flames winning the draw. And it's very, very, very important. Getting it back to Cooper. And that is the key. He can work it from there. He has the option, of course, of taking the shot or dishing off, but uh, deciding to take the shot, and a, a good job by Marcel Cousineau making the save with, of course, no rebound. 26.3 seconds remaining. Shots are 11-7 in favor of the Flames at one point. When the Flames took their 1-0 lead, the shots were 8-2. So Lowell has come back a little bit in the latter stages of the period. And yet they still trail 1-0. Another face-off to Cousineau's left. Landry wins it again. Varlamov for Cooper to Nat Domichelli. Top of the right circle. Down low in the goal line. Varlamov to the point. Cooper shot. Bounces off a of body into the right corner. 15 seconds in the period. Varlamov back to David Cooper. Cooper for Salloway to Cooper. One timer save. Rebound. They score. Eric Landry. It's 2 0. We talked about the importance of a faceoff. Baines didn't get it clean, but it was kicked back to David Cooper, and a good job of controlling. A couple of passes, and Cooper getting the shot on. Eric Landry and Varlamov in front, I believe, 
it was Landry that put it behind Marcel Cousineau. A good job of good positioning and a good job of controlling the puck by the Flames. Flames jump into a 2-0 lead. That is a big goal. It was indeed Eric Landry who again won a number yep. of face-offs deep in the low zone. And like you said, he didn't win it cleanly, but he stayed with it. Absolutely. And they were able to get the puck back to David Cooper. And the opening period will come to an end at Harbor Station. Flames 2, Lowell nothing. Boy, that's a big goal. That is an absolutely huge goal, and if anything is going to give you momentum, that goal, that type of goal, will do it. The last minute of the period, the dying seconds of the period, great job by the Flames of getting the face off once again. Great job by Eric Landry. He's been playing much, much better as of late. And you give him Varlamov and Don McKelly, and why wouldn't he play a lot better? He's doing a great job getting the face off, and once again, David Cooper, an integral part of the power play, he does it again. And you think that knot on Frank Anzalone's tie just got a little tighter <laughs> Maybe. around his neck? Yeah, I'd say Frankie could be choking up a, a couple of uh, gasps right there. That, that has to hurt. That really is. It's such a big goal for the Flames, and really that has to deflate the Lowell Lock Monsters, who are coming in here down 2 nothing in the series, certainly coming into to a team's uh, rink that this team has been playing very well. You, you go down there and take two, you come back here, you know, you, your backs are up against the wall if you're Frank Anzalone, and certainly this last goal to make it 2 nothing really has to hurt big time. Two St. John goals in that period. Eglin, his first from Scoville and Petrovicki at the 10-minute mark. And then Landry, his first from Cooper and Salloway on the power play. 19.52 officially is the time of the goal. The shots were 13-7 in favor of the Flames. Your first period penalty summary. Jackson and Craig and Eric Chiron roughing at 148. Schultz tripping, Oduya roughing at 626. Karen slashing at 749. Oduya obstruction tripping at 1106. Cowan roughing at 1323. Karen's roughing in a misconduct. Beijan roughing at the 16 minute mark. And Kennedy obstruction hooking at 1916. It's 2-0 St. John after one in game three at Harbor Station. These are the Calder Cup playoffs on TVNB and Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. Welcome back to Harbor Station for Game 3 of the Best of Five Calder Cup Playoff Series between the St. John Flames and the Lowell Lock Monsters. After 20 minutes of play, Flames lead 2-0. And second period action coming right up. Like welcome into the makeshift studios here tonight. Bill Stewart, former Flames head coach and now the head coach from the calendar. Thanks for having by, Bill. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. I guess we'll start with uh, how's it feel back to be in the friendly confines of Harbor Station? Well, it was a great facility, certainly to apprentice in. And uh, the fans were great. town was great. It was just a positive experience. Now you're here, of course, uh, Lowell being the affiliate of the New York Islanders. Taking a look at things, how do you see the first period so far? Well, obviously we didn't deliver any adversity as far as I was concerned uh, on our behalf, but uh, give credit to the Flames. They played very well. I think they're very well prepared. Of course, last year you one game shy away from winning the hardware, bringing it back home here to St. John. Tell us a little bit about that game six and your feelings after the game. Well, it was a uh, it was a situation where I think everybody went to the wall for one another. Anytime you give yourself that opportunity to play and, and try and win a championship, I don't believe there's any losers. To anybody who might not have followed the story that close, why didn't you return? Why didn't you want to come back and take another shot at it? Well, you know, it, it was just a situation that arose that uh, New York was interested in my services. Mike Milbury talked to me extensively about the situation and. Uh, I jumped at it and it was very good of the Flames to uh, let me go and I was very uh, happy, proud uh, and just to be a part of the Calgary Flames organization. Let's talk a little bit about your first year on Long Island. Give us a kind of a review of how you felt the season went. Well, I started out as an assistant coach and it was, uh, it was an experience. Rather than making um, decisions, you're making suggestions. But, uh, you know, as the season went on and then they, they did make the coaching change, uh, I felt very acclimated to the situation. So, of course, uh, kind of a rebuilding year is going right now in New York. How do you feel, or where do you feel, one more player, two more players before you can make that leap into the back into the playoff picture? Well, I think it's a situation where we obviously need a number one center. We lost Robert Reichel. Uh, we need an experienced defenseman. Uh, we have a good young core of defensemen and uh, possibly, you know, a guy that can put in 20 to 25 goals, lead a little, 
little extra leadership in that regard. Uh, I think the future looks pretty bright for the New York Islanders. It's a situation where we've got to give these people with potential a time to grow. Now, Sigmund Kofi, of course, was a late sign. He was late getting to camp this year. Late getting to start with the team, period. How bad did that hurt the chemistry? Well, he's, he's been around the organization for four years. I, I, Chemistry-wise, I don't think it hurt. I, I think it hurt as far as his production early because you can't take three months off and expect to jump back into the National Hockey League. Uh, he's a formidable opponent. He's, a, he's a, just a great guy. He, uh, he certainly can uh, take people out of their seats, and that's what the game's all about. Now, the big question is, are you going to be back on Long Island next year, or do you want to get into that? Well, we're no, we're negotiating right now, and uh, certainly if there's a commitment made by the Islanders towards myself, uh, I'm certainly uh, more than willing to make that commitment back. And I think that's what uh, breeds healthy relationships, and certainly uh, I see nothing but positive for the New York Islanders. How do you see the playoffs so far? Any big uh, surprises in your book? Or? Oh, obviously, Ottawa getting uh, beat four straight. Uh, they were an awesome team throughout the course of the 28-week season, but uh, it was just one of those things where they got kind of in a rut. They never were in a rut all year, and it was just an unfortunate situation. You always want to see uh, any of Canada's teams do the very best. I'm going to stick you out on the limb here. What do you think is going to win the cup? New Jersey. Devils? Yeah. Big reason why? Or? Balance, Rodeur, very, very well prepared, and uh, depth. Bill, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. That's uh, Saint Saint, former St. John Flames head coach Bill Stewart, now of course the head coach for the New York Islanders. Live from Harbor Station, the Flames lead the Lowell Lock Monsters 2-0 after 20 minutes of play. And we'll be right back after this. Aaron, briefly describe the two games down in Lowell as you were there giving the play-by-play -play for the rest of the people in the province that didn't hear. Well, there were two pretty vicious playoff games, that's for sure. Uh, those two teams had played the last two games of the regular season here at Harbor Station last weekend, so it really carried over, and it started right from the opening face-off on Friday night. There was so much uh, pushing and shoving after the whistle, and just during the game itself, uh, the stick work was brutal. Uh, there were two match penalties assessed for deliberate attempt to injure on Saturday or on Friday night. They were rescinded on Saturday to Steve Beja and Dane Jackson. Both of those guys were able to play. Lowell sent in a tape uh, looking for supplemental discipline on a Wade Belak incident. Uh, they were just two very vicious hockey games, but I guess that's what you have to expect uh, during the playoffs is that there's going to be that extra hacking and whacking that uh, perhaps isn't as prevalent during the regular season. How um, Dom Kelly and Belak coming down, how much of an impact have they had on the team? Well, I think the biggest difference between St. John and Lowell right now is that the Flames got a bunch of guys back from Calgary, and Lowell got a lot of players back from the Islanders. They had six guys up with the parent club at the end of the National Hockey League season, but the biggest difference is, is that the St. John guys feel like they're a part of the team, and the best example is a Mike Watt who's down with Lowell. He played 74 games this year with the Islanders, so he came down and played one game with Lowell, and I don't understand how he's expected to feel a part of the team, and he's a very good player. He's a National Hockey League caliber player, and he hasn't done very much in this series, and I was expecting a lot more from him, but he seems to be somewhat disinterested, and perhaps you have to expect that. Uh, some of their other players just uh, really haven't performed that well. Uh, Craig Sharon, uh, a veteran who's won the Calder Cup before, has really been their key player, but for St. John, Belak coming down, uh, Lee Sorkin, who was up in Calgary for a while and then came down and was injured, uh, he was just phenomenal on the weekend without Eric Sharon. He was so good on Saturday night, it was unbelievable. He had four points uh, including a goal, had the breakaway that led to the game-winning goal in overtime after leaving the penalty box. He was just phenomenal. And this is a guy who played uh, four seasons in the Rangers organization, never got a crack in the NHL, played one game after the trade uh, in St. John, and all of a sudden was up playing on Hockey Night in Canada with Calgary on a Saturday night in Phoenix. So uh, he's just been a tremendous pickup, and the Flames have added sort of to the mix, and I think their chemistry has really started to gel together. Let's change gears a little bit. Your views on the Fredericton and St. John series. Uh, Tuesday night, Fredericton lost in overtime to the, to the Leafs. Uh, what do you think of that series, and do you think what kind of a series do you expect of it's Fredericton and St. John? Well, I predicted that the Leafs were going to be Fredericton in five games, but I certainly didn't think the Fredericton was going to win back-to-back -back games in Newfoundland. That game on Tuesday night at the Aiken Center was just a fantastic hockey game. It was unbelievable. The third period was as, as exciting a hockey as you could ever want to see, and it was interesting because of what had gone on in the morning skate. There was a little bit of a rumble after the Canadians refused to leave the ice at the appointed hour, and the Leafs decided to just storm the ice type of thing, and you thought it was just going to be a bloodbath after the Canadians got the early goal and then were ahead 2 nothing. You thought, well, this is really going to degenerate now into a big kook show, but it didn't. The Leafs stayed with it. They got the late goal in the second period on the power play to make it 2-1. Then they got the late goal in the third with the goalie pulled to tie it, and then they won it in overtime. And I think the Leafs are going to win on Thursday, and I think that series is going back to Newfoundland. And I 
who knows what can happen in a game five, but it's interesting in these best of five series, and we're going to see that tonight from St. John. If you come home up 2 nothing, which you probably weren't supposed to do in winning both games on the road, if you lose that third game, then all of a sudden you think, uh-oh, what's going to happen in game four? Because if you lose that game, then all of a sudden you have to go back on the road and try to win in that building again. So it's going to be very interesting, and I know that St. John hopes that uh, it doesn't have to worry about the same fate that Fredericton might have to deal with now. But in terms of talking about a Fredericton-St. John series, I think that's uh, quite premature from both ends. Uh, the Maple Leafs wouldn't want to hear talk like that, and neither would Lowell. Let's give, uh, give us your prediction on the National Hockey League. Who's going to win the Stanley Cup? I think Colorado is going to win the Stanley Cup. It was interesting what happened uh, with the tragedy in Columbine High School where they moved that series to San Jose and you thought, hmm, if San Jose can get a split, uh, that might turn uh, to their favor, but Colorado took care of business down there and uh, they should be able to wrap that up quite handily. And if you can get Colorado and Detroit playing in a Western Conference final, they could uh, hammer one away, or hammer away at one another. But uh, I still like Colorado. I like Patrick Waugh. I like the guys that they've added, certainly with Fleury, and I think they can probably hoist it again. To play. The St. John Flames are leading 2 nothing against the Lowell Lock Monsters, and an edge on goals here, or shots on goal, 13-7. Jim, your views on this uh, period so far? Well, crashing and banging. I kind of figured both teams would come out, try to set a tone. Lowell trying to take the physical end of things, trying to intimidate the Flames a little bit. I think that didn't work. Flames, of course, got a nice goal from Alan Eglin, late goal from Eric Landry to finish it up at two nothing after 20 minutes of play. So, if the Flames can keep up this intensity, I'm sorry to say it, but the Lowell Lock Monster is going to be looking for their first reservation on the golf course come tomorrow morning. I've been talking to Aaron Kenny before that interview that we just showed. Um, he said, you, if you see the Flames getting up one nothing, two nothing, somewhere in that area, he said, you're going to expect the Lowell Lock Monsters to pack it in, say, thanks a lot. It's going a great season. We finished first. At least we got a banner to show for it for the Atlantic Division. But uh, Aaron just didn't think that the Lowell has it to uh, play tonight. St. John's not a big physical team, but they're showing it tonight. They're playing big. They're playing physical. Wade Belak, uh, Sharon, who is coming back, as we mentioned earlier, at the top of the show, is coming back from an injury, basically, with, a, with either a flu or a stomach uh, food poisoning. And he's in there. He's, he's up in the rush. He's uh, banging in the corners. He's throwing a few knuckles, you know, with the gloves on, obviously. But uh, one thing I noticed was Chris Clark had a little pow in the jaw there, and he went down like, yeah. a, like a sack of bricks, you know. It's just, uh, I don't know, maybe a little, te uh, little bit of a glass jaw there. But uh, I think we're going to see things break open here in the second period. Lowell Lock Monsters have nothing to lose. They're right behind the eight ball, and the eight ball is just about ready to tip into the corner pocket. Hey, this is it. I mean, they've got to lay everything on the line tonight because if they don't, then, of course, there's no game four. There's no game five. That's it. That's the end of the season. A lot of people were questioning whether Lowell, should they have finished in first place? Well, yeah, they played in a well enough to finish in first place. But if you're a Flames fan, you're sitting back home tonight, you're going, this is the total package. This is what the St. John Flames had to offer. A lot of call-ups during the year. Couldn't keep that lineup solidified. Now they've got it. Going to make a good run in the Calder Cup playoffs. Everybody's happy. Marcel Cousineau, the point where we were, where we interviewed Bill Stewart, had a chance to see Cousineau come off the ice. Tell you right now, folks, he is not a happy camper giving up that late goal to Landry. So it's going to be interesting to see how his confidence holds up going into the second period. Well, I was down underneath, too, when they were coming off the ice, and there's a big cement pillar as they come down the hallway down there. And I'm telling you, it didn't fare too well down there. No, so no. Um, there's a lot of broken sticks, a lot of little fiberglass sitting around down there. But we should mention, though, also, we should really be looking forward right now, I'm hoping, anyway, for a Fredericton St. John series. This would really fill the rink. I just like to brush right now in attendance. I think it's around 4,500, 4,700. Roughly. And that's, that's really, you know, it's the first round of the playoffs. It might be typical here for St. John. But uh, I think there should be more fans out here supporting this team. It's supposed to be a sea of red tonight. It's kind of a ripple of red out there. It's nothing really spectacular. Yeah, well, they're trying to do the same thing they did last year. Talk to Daryl Goyash, who's general manager of the St. John Board of Trade, earlier this week. Daryl wants to get that Calder Cup fever going back on here in the Port City. The business is up down, driving around the cars, get the signs up in the back window, the side windows, wearing the sea of red to the rink. You're absolutely right. But I think after the year that the Flames had, it was so up and down, fourth place finish. A lot of fans out there right now have got the big question mark hanging over the team going, is this team for real or is Lowell not as good as everybody thought? So we'll wait and see. But, yeah, the perfect scenario is Stu McDonald is hoping Fredericton wins that series against the St. John's Maple Leafs. I mean, you talk about full attendance, you'll get 6,000 in this rink plus every night if they do play Fredericton in the Atlantic Division final. And, of course, Fredericton leaving town next year, that's it. What a seven-game series that would be. Well, like you say, that will be a seven-game series. It's guaranteed two, at least two here. They will be the third and fourth games because of the fact that Fredericton did finish higher than St. John. The first two games in Fredericton, you'll see a couple of busloads of uh, Flames boosters going up for that game, definitely. And also, you'll see a rough and tumble game up there. You're going to see Blue Ant all ready to shine up there. And you, you might even see a little Royer and uh, Blue Ant because they didn't get a chance to go when they did play here on the Thursday night back on Gordy Glant night here a week ago or so. So 
we, we may see some pretty good tilts up there. But first, got to get by the St. John's Maple Leafs, who played pretty well last night. And also talking to Aaron, I just saw it on TVMB, but uh, he's saying watching it live was quite an exciting game to watch. He said one of the more exciting games. He said he thought he's seen exciting games in Lowell, but he's seen a lot better exciting games there in Fredericton. Yeah, I mean, this is your time of the year. I mean, if you're a hockey fan, obviously, you know, the Calder Cups, the Stanley Cup playoffs, everybody gets wrapped up in the playoffs because the players know if you don't lay it all out on the line and you don't give it 100% every night, you're going to lose games, and that means you're on the golf course that much earlier and your season's over. Don't want that to happen, but, yeah, you're exactly right. Fredericton is going to be banged up. Whoever St. John ends up playing in the next round, if they do advance, we don't want to put the jinx on them yet. Either team they play, whether it be the St. John's, Maple Leafs, or it be the Fredericton Canadians, they're going to be a banged-up team because that, I think, is going to stretch out to five games. Going to have to go back to the Rock for the fifth and final game. Travel weary, banged up, so the Flames will definitely, if they can wrap it up tonight, have a little bit of an advantage, rested bodies, rested minds, and they'll be ready to go for that next series. Aaron was a little surprised that the uh, Fredericton St. John's series is not as rough and tumble as they thought it would be because every time the Rock come to Fredericton, it was pretty rough and tumble. Therefore, we see this series, it's rough and tumble, their sticks are up, the gloves, you know, a lot of leather, leather washing in the face and stuff, and it's just, um, you know, it's just, it's just terrible, really, to watch. This looks like a preseason game is what it looks like out there tonight, but what Lowell's trying to do is wear these guys down. I've been listening to um, one of the assistant coaches upstairs, he's got a headset, he's down to the other assistant coach on the bench, and he's, he's, uh, he's given some pretty strong orders down there, and he's not too happy up there. He's uh, really berating a lot of players, and if people could hear it, boy, you know, it'd be a lot of uh, words we'd have to bleep out of there because he's really uptight up there. Yeah, so. no question. But we're getting set for second period of action here, Jim, with uh, Aaron Kennedy and Steve Ryan. We'll have the play-by-play -play right after this. Monsters 13 to 7, and really, I, I thought held a pretty good territorial a, uh, advantage over the Lock Monsters, and really, it showed who the better team was the first period. Certainly, the Flames, uh, I thought they dominated them in uh, most aspects of the game. How about this? In the third period of the first game in, of this series on Friday night, the Flames scored in the last minute the empty net goal by Saint Louis. Then on Saturday night, the Flames scored in the last minute of the second period that huge power play goal, goal by Sorokin. That turned a 2-0 deficit into a 2-1 deficit going into the third period. Then they scored in the final minute of the third period. And then they score in the final minute of the first period here tonight. Someone might want to tell the Lock Monsters that hockey periods at this level are 20 minutes long. Absolutely. But it also shows, Aaron, that the, the Flames are a hungry team. This team has seen the light at the end of the tunnel. It, it's been such a bad year. It's been a tough year. Uh, so many people in and out of the lineup, call-ups from the East Coast, injuries, call-ups to Calgary. Uh, really, the bottom line is uh, this team is playing well, and it knows it's a pretty good team now, and it, it's kind of like a, uh, a dog. It can smell fear, and uh, really, they, these guys are uh, playing a popular game right now. And uh, what about Don McKelly, the first period? Absolutely flying out there. Just look great. We're set for second period action. The Flames, two. The Lock Monsters, nothing in both the game and the series. And the puck ends up in the Lowell zone. Ray Giroux controls for the Lock Monsters. Lowell skates from left to right. Here's Nabokov to the St. John line with a shot kicked out by Giger with the left pad. And it's cleared by Dom Kelly. Giroux loses it. Here comes Dom Kelly into the Lowell zone. Dom Kelly the shot. Cousineau the save. And he'll hang on, 25 seconds gone. In the second period, St. John leading this game two to nothing. We've talked over the years about the American Hockey League and how it's a training ground for players, and coaches, and officials. But this week, the St. John Flames front office sends its first member to the National Hockey League. Sean McLeod, the team's director of media relations and team services, has landed a job in the National Hockey League. He'll be working out of the NHL office in Montreal with the Central Registry as the project manager. If you know anything about hockey, you understand what that means. If you don't, you probably don't. I'll try and alleviate some of the confusion here in a moment as Landry cycles the puck along the left wing boards for Don McKelly. It bounces in behind the net. Kennedy comes up with it for the Leafs. Kennedy skates away 
from Landry, brings it to the Flames line, tried to split the defense, but Sorokin works him to the boards. Now Vladimir Orsok loses it, Varlamov heads up ice, Varlamov hounded by Orsok, plays it for Landry, moving it on the right side. Landry waiting, dropping it off, Sorkin slides into the left corner, works it in behind the goal, Varlamov skates after it, Malkoff gets there first and dumps it down ice. This will be an icing as Eric Sharon is back for the touch with a minute 10 gone in the second period and the Flames leading two to nothing. Sean McLeod will be working in the Central Registry Office for the National Hockey League and that's where they deal with all of the contracts. He'll know what sort of bonus structure Yaramir Yager has for goals and assists and awards that he might win and free agent signings and the like, waiver draft, all of those things go through Sean McLeod's desk and he's actually going to be leaving the team at the end of next week. He starts his new job on May the 10th in Montreal, and certainly a well-deserved promotion to the National Hockey League. But one of the good guys certainly makes our job a lot easier, Sean Thanks McLeod. Ever. And he'll be missed by this organization. Certainly, uh, hopefully somebody will be nearly as competent as Sean to take over. And uh, I'll tell you, he did, he's done a great job over the years. Been with the team since day one, initially as an intern from UNBSJ. Salloway. Gets the puck into the right corner. Alan Eglin, who opened the scoring, stripped by Wallace. Sheba Turkin plays it away from Wrigley, and Warren Looning controls. Looning drops it, carrying it ahead and shooting it in is Schultz. Jager plays it away from Looning. Wrigley for Alan Eglin. Long lead pass, looking for Salloway. It bounces into the Lowell zone. Wrigley swoops in and backhands it behind the goal. Eglin is after it first into the left corner. He frees it up for Salloway. Now for Eglin, moving in behind the net, in front. That one zips past Brigley and sails down ice. Nearing the two minute mark, here's a loose puck, they score! Jiguer misplayed it in the corner, and it squirted in front to Buddy Wallace, who has a wide open net, an unassisted garbage goal for Lowell. And does that ever turn the complexion of this game right around? because the Flames are sitting pretty up two to nothing, and then Jiguer plays it like a hand grenade in the corner, and it bounces in front of Wallace, and Jiguer tried to get back, and Scoville was there as well, trying to act as a netminder, but Wallace, who played with Chris Clark at Clarkson, gets the unassisted goal at 153, and St. John's lead is cut in half. Yikes. Not a good one. No, and the new ice, and that's that's exactly what happened there. New ice, and that puck just Jaguar played it nonchalantly. He's been playing the puck a lot better. Hasn't been taking really chances that he hasn't had to do. And uh, I like what Jaguar's doing with the puck for the most part, but uh, that's a, a really a bad mistake there, and certainly uh, puts uh, Lowell back in this hockey game. Yeah, and that was after Eglin tried to work the puck in front sure. of Wrigley and it sailed down ice after the Flames had some pressure. It ends up in their net. Speaking of ice, it was comical here this morning at the Lowell game day skate. They were out horsing around when the Zamboni was still on the ice surface and that's generally a no-no. The rink attendants don't like that. Well, one of the Lowell players, who shall remain nameless, certainly is not a charter member of Mensa by any stretch of the imagination, decided to fire a puck that wound up being swallowed up into the gears of the Zamboni, choked off the Zamboni machine. And the Harbor Station Arena staff said, you guys can have your practice with half of the ice clean and half of the ice a little slushy. We're out of here. <laughs> I don't know if they have to send the Lock Monsters a bill for Zamboni repairs. Oh, brain cramp. Good move. Zamboni eats puck. Film at 11. Two to one, St. John leads. Puck is in the right wing corner in the flame zone. Controlled by the Lock Monsters, Warren Looning. Varlamov tried to play it away. Bilak can't get it out. Varlamov has lost his stick. The Lock Monsters with some pressure trying to even the score. Sheba Turkin with a point shot, loose in front. Bilak plays it to the boards. And then backhands it in behind the net. Pinching in is Giroux from the left side. Giroux taken down by Varlamov. That's going to be a penalty. Varlamov was without his stick. Here's Crowley from the point. Slap shot. Jiguer the save. He hangs on. And the Flames are going to be short-handed for the 
third time in the game. Well, good job by Giroux of pinching and uh, Varlamov, as you mentioned, Aaron, without his stick and two hands free makes a makes a bad play and he uh, put the hook, put the grab on Giroux and he's going to the box for two and suddenly this game, the momentum at least, has turned around and we're going to have to get someone to kind of take charge and have the Flames regain their composure all over or really dominated the first period. And a bad break there on the Jaguar miscue and rolls back through this hockey game. Three minutes of the time of a holding minor against Sergei Varlamov, power play number three for Lowell. The Flames over the weekend took 32 minor penalties. That's their sixth tonight. They lead the AHL in these Calder Cup playoffs with 38 minor penalties really comes as no big shock during the regular season. The Flames were assessed 621 minors. Only Providence with 641 took more. So Lowell with a power play that has scored only once in the series, but with a chance to even the score here at two. You talked about the penalties. Sure, it's great to play aggressive, but really it's the, the bad penalties that will hurt you. And the, certainly not a good penalty there by Varlamov. Ray Giroux brings the puck up, ice to center. He'll blast it in. Jaguar is out behind the net, giving it to Chiron. Chiron moves in behind the goal, gets it to Daryl Scoville, and he'll bounce it off the glass past Giroux down ice. 15 to 10 are the shots in favor of St. John. The Flames lead 2-1. Here's Bejan picking up a loose puck thanks to some tenacious play by Cowan. And Bejan plays it back to the St. John line. Scoville returns it to Bejan, and he'll shoot it in deep. Good penalty killing there by Beijing, Cowan, Scoville, and Chiron. Now Dama Kelly, Landry, Belak, and Sorokin are on the ice. Kennedy slams it into the St. John's own. Jackson on the left wing boards. Haggerty to the point. Giroux the shot. Stopped by Jaguar. And now the Flames, Belak will clear. A minute gone in the power play. Cousineau leaves it behind the net. Craig Chiron chased by Dama Kelly. Chiron is able to get it to center. Landry loses it. Landry tried to move it for Sorokin. Now Dama Kelly is able to work it in to the Lowell zone. Fresh penalty killers up front. Salawi and Eglin with 39 seconds to go in the minor to Varlamov. Moving into the St. John zone to Barkov, but way offside on the left wing is Warren Looney. It's four minutes, 24 seconds gone in period number two. St. John leading this game two to one on first period goals by Eglin and Landry. Wallace gets Lowell on the board here early in the second. I think one of the keys of the Flames in the first period, the forwards were back. The forwards were helping out the defense a lot. And we know we've talked about this Lowell offense. It's uh, really not one of the best in the league. Uh, they don't have a lot of uh, offensive snipers, but the bottom line is uh, when you can get your forwards helping out your D and getting back to good positional hockey and really staying on the points and along the side boards really helps out your defense a lot, and it showed the first period. Some jockeying for position here on the faceoff, which is in the neutral zone outside the St. John Blue Line. Eglin against Wallace. Wallace wins it. Crowley will fire it in. It ends up in the left corner. Looning is in there after it. He lets it roll to Sheba Turk and he plays it in deep. Sharon sends it off the boards, and Crowley will gobble it up in the neutral zone. Cross ice for Sheba Turk and he backpedals inside his own line, plays it off the end boards for Ted Crowley. Crowley moves it back to Sheba Turk in a dozen seconds in the power play. Lowell trailing two to one, facing elimination tonight at Harbor Station. Crowley can't spot Looning on the left side. This could be icing, won't be, as Looning's in there first. But now Salawi is able to clear. Sheba Turk turns and gave it away to Varlamov, just out of the box. Varlamov moving in top of the left circle, fanned on his shot. It comes to Salawi. He got knocked down and heading up ice is Nick Baudouin. Baudouin for Looning to the St. John line, played away by Eglin. Two on one, Salloway and Brigley. Salloway moving in, Brigley scores! What a pretty feed from Martin Salloway, and it's an open net for Travis Brigley. The Flames regain their two goal advantage, it's 3-1. San Luis played uh, Crowley like a banjo. A couple of good jukes and fired it over to Travis Brigley. You see San Luis coming down on the wing. Good job, took it in deep. Crowley went to the middle and stopped. And Brigley following up, good job by Bull. Brigley fires it in the empty net. That's a big goal for the Flames. Hopefully takes some of the momentum away from the lock launch and brings it back into the Flames' house. 
And the Flames jump into a 3-1 lead. is actually the time of the goal. There's going to be a penalty with a monster down shot by Giroux, but play is blown down, and it's a high sticking penalty, either two or four, as Vladimir Orsog went down in the corner. Flames lead it three to one. These are the Calder Cup playoffs. Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. is the time of the double minor for high sticking against Lee Sorkin. And any accidental high stick that causes an injury, and there is blood on the ice in the corner in the flame zone, results in a double minor for high sticking. You may have seen this last night on TVNB in Fredericton when Mark Dayell was dragged down by Miloslav Gurin's high stick in the neutral zone. Gurin picked up a double minor for high sticking and a very scary injury last night suffered oh. by Dale, although there was some good news late this afternoon emanating from the Chalmers Hospital that Dale is able to see some light in that eye. And what is very eerie about that whole situation, you'll remember early in the season when Lowell played in Newfoundland when Lock Monsters rookie Jeff Libby lost his eye in an accident with the Leafs. It was the skate of Mark Dale that did the damage as Dayell was trying to split the Lowell defenders and got cartwheeled and his skate sliced Libby's eye. Someone suggested today that that was ironic. To me, that is simply eerie. And Mark Dayell is a good guy. Bobs his head around the ice a little bit too much, but certainly we hope that he's going to be okay. They're planning to transfer him either to Halifax or Toronto, likely sometime tomorrow, but very scary injury suffered last night by Mark Dayell. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a big piece of the puzzle over there for the Maple Leafs, and certainly he'll be missed by that team. And hopefully, Mark Dial will uh, everything will be fine with him, and he'll be back in action. Known as Diesel to his teammates was Clark Wilms' line mate with the Saskatoon Blades a few years ago. They lit it up. <laughs> Lock Monsters on a four-minute power play here. They trail three to one. We're in the second period at Harbor Station in St. John. Here's Ray Giroux to center, firing it in, but offside is Nick Baudouin. 13.46 remaining in the second period. Brigley has scored here in the second period to go along with first period goals by Eglund and Landry. Wallace has the only goal for the Lock Monsters, and the Flames have a 3-1 to one lead. The Lowell Lock Monsters, the winners of the Atlantic Division during the regular season. And the regular season winners of this division, be it Atlantic, Canadian, or Northern, have been cursed in the playoffs. Last season, the Flames were the only team thus far in the 1990s to win the division title and then advance past the second round of the playoffs. So the curse continues thus far for Lowell. Down 2-0 in the series, down two goals here in period two tonight. Giroux shoots it in, it's off the glass, skips into the left corner. Baudouin gets there first for Lowell, moves it for Buddy Wallace behind the net. Wallace flips it for Looning along the right wing boards. He loses it. Landry pushes it past Sharon. Here's Dama Kelly moving in on the left side. Dama Kelly forced in behind the goal by Giroux. Landry comes up with the loose puck. Landry along the left wing boards trips up his man. And the Lock Monsters have the puck. Landry took a stick in the face by Wallace as Wallace was trying to get back to his skates and move up ice. And the fans aren't happy as Lowell is offside at the St. John Blue Line. If Lowell rallies to win this game, game four for Friday night at 7 o'clock here at Harbor Station. If the Flames win, the Flames will open the Eastern Conference semifinals on the road. The first two games in what would be a best of seven series 
will be played in either Fredericton or St. John's. The Canadians leading that series 2-1 with game four tomorrow night in New in Saint in Fredericton, rather. And you know my thoughts on that. The Leafs are going to win tomorrow night, and that series is going to go back to Newfoundland. Canadians had them. They were up 2-0 last night and blew it. Losing in overtime after the Leafs scored Kevin Adams' goal in the last couple of minutes with the goaltender on the bench to tie it. And then Ryan Pepperall, the hero in overtime. I expect the Leafs to win tomorrow night, and that series will go back to Newfoundland for a fifth and deciding game on Saturday. Icing is the call here against the Lock Monsters, and I initially predicted that the Leafs would win that series yes, did. in five games. <laughs> I don't think Agnes McCarthy is going to be too happy with your comments. I predicted the Canadians are going to oust the Leafs, and uh, I remember saying that Jose Theodore was going to be a big part of it. He played very, very well last night as he did over in Newfoundland last weekend. 46 saves in game Absol two. Absolutely, and uh, was sharp last night. Uh, really not a lot he could do about the goal. Pepperall, really, he's alone in front, made the initial save, and the puck got past him on the second shot. But uh, still like Fredericton's chances, and uh, I certainly think that uh, it'll be a good game tomorrow night. May possibly get up there and see that, but uh, certainly I think goaltending will be a key. Reese and Theodore, uh, both Two very, very good goaltenders. Reese with a huge amount of experience, and certainly Theodore with his acrobatic style. Uh, anything could happen with two good goaltenders uh, like those two. Malcock in behind the Lowell net. 2.35 to go in the four-minute high sticking penalty to Lee Sorokin. Malcock to the neutral zone, gets it to Haggerty, who whacks it in. Jiguer leaves it behind the net. Charon blasts it off the boards. Crowley holds in right point. Kennedy plays it to the left corner. Nabokov. To the line for Malcock in front for Haggerty. Knocked away by Belak. Malcock can't keep it in. Salloway racing after it. Cousineau will come out. Salloway knocked it away from the Leaf netminder. It popped into the left corner. The Leaf netminder, the old days of Cousineau. That's the Lock Monster netminder. Ed Crowley, lots of ex Leafs in this series. Steps to center and fires it in. Kennedy along the left wing boards. Beijing. Freeze it up, Belak plays it to the line, not out. Giroux fakes the shot, moves it for Nabokov. A minute 45 in the four minute power play. Nabokov in the left circle, down low. Kennedy back on the left wing boards. Nabokov watched by Belak, gives it again to Kennedy. He's flattened by Scoville. And now Scoville has the puck. He'll bring it up ice, three on two. Short handed, Scoville tried to play it for San Luis. That's broken up. Wallace is offside over two lines having just come off the Lowell bench. Lucky break for the Flames that that was a two-line pass. Scoville making the good rush. Darryl Scoville playing pretty steady again tonight. Had a good weekend last weekend. Once again, playing very steady. Gets involved once in a while in the play. But uh, he's come a long ways uh, from his first games here early in October. And certainly uh, with all the injuries as we've talked about through December and January and February, uh, Daryl Scoville had a hard time through that, but uh, has really bounced back and is uh, playing very, very steady back in the D right now with getting uh, some pretty good help, of course, with Eric Sharon, Sorkin, and Belak. But uh, uh, Daryl Scoville doing a very good job. Evidently, the officials have determined that was not an offside pass, and they take the face off to center ice. Lucky break for the plane. Well, the only thing I can figure is that Wallace Tipped. touched it with mm. his stick on his defensive side of center, even though his skates were on the opposite side of center. And until the puck comes over the red line, it's not an offside pass, and they must have determined that after the call had been made. There's going to be a penalty against St. John. So it's going to be a five on three wow. for 61 seconds for Lowell. And I believe... Like, uh, I thought it was Eric Chiron going off, but no, perhaps it's Daryl Scoville. And it is Scoville going. at the 8.50 mark of period number two. So Lowell with another chance to get within one. A big chance here. Slashing against Scoville. 8.50 is the time. So Lowell thus far is one for 23 in the series with the man advantage. And that's a statistic that they'll be chewing on on that bus trip home if they don't win this game tonight. Well, they're certainly not doing the job on the power play, and once again, give the Flames credit, doing a good job on the penalty kill, but uh, 
down two men here with 11-10 left in the second period. They're up two goals, and uh, this is going to be a big test for the Flames penalty kill right here. Faceoff is to the right of Jean-Sebastien Giguera. Those penalty killers are Landry, Salouy, and Chiron. Landry wins the faceoff. Chiron clears the zone. <laughs> Can't do it any better than that. Giroux, Kennedy, Crowley, Chiron, and Orsog on the power play. Giroux into the St. John zone for Crowley at the right point. 44 seconds in the two-man. Giroux shot wide on the glove side. Crowley inches in along the right wing boards, gets it to the corner to Kennedy. Kennedy back to Crowley. Shot, save Jaguar. Where is it? Loose. Jaguar's oh. down and is able to smother it. And now we've got some pushing and shoving as Vladimir Orsog Tried to whack that puck away from Jiguer, and the Flames take umbrage with that. Looked like Craig Chiron might have had a chance to put that by Jaguer. It was kind of laying off to the side, but a good recovery by Jaguer, smothering that puck. Craig Chiron, very, very, very dangerous. And uh, he's been hired on the Flames this year. Good control of the puck by the lock monsters, getting back to the point. And as you mentioned, that scrum around front, and Chiron just not getting to that rebound. Uh, every, it seems every... NHL series I've been watching lately as there's been scrums all the time. Very, very physical playoffs so far in the NHL. Certainly last weekend in Lowell, as you had, you had alluded to, and had Brad James has mentioned in his column, uh, basically a war down there, and both teams uh, very, very, very physical hockey. 90 minutes in penalties in game two of this series, the most of any game thus far in the Calder Cup playoffs. Lowell controls the faceoff. Giroux fakes the shot, moves it for Crowley in the right circle. Crowley gives it back to Giroux. 20 seconds in the two men. Now Crowley plays it down low. Sharon back to Giroux. Shot. Jaguar the save. Rebound. Orsog scores. And they score with 15 seconds left in the double minor to Sorokin. So the Lock Monsters will still be on the power play for the next 73 seconds. And they're back within one. An easy goal for Vladimir Orsog on the rebound. Well, good position by Orzog, and he, Sharon, and Kennedy, these guys are snipers. They can put the puck in the net, and that's just what Orzog did. I think he was up a dozen games with the Islanders this year and came down late in time for the Lowell playoff run. But uh, good job, good control by the Lock Monsters, working it from the point, of course, as they do, as most teams do, getting the puck down low. And Orzog standing by the right side of the crease, left side of the crease, and putting up by Jaguar to bring, this, uh, this, uh, bring the Lock Monsters within one. Giroux and Sharon the assists on Orsog's power play goal at 9.37. Landry was shaken up on the play, and Brian Miller, the Flames' head trainer, made his way to the ice to tend to Eric Landry. So it's 3-2 St. John. A little more than 10 minutes remaining in the second period, and the Lock Monsters are still on the power play. Cowan gets the puck to Sorokin. He spent more than three and a half minutes in the penalty box, so he's got fresh legs. He plays it to the Lowell line. Crowley cuts back into his own zone, now brings it up ice. Lowell from left to right. He'll fire it in. It rims around the boards into the right corner. Warren Looning. Looning moving in behind the net. Loses it to Sorokin. He'll play it ahead. Kept in by Crowley. Now it bounces by him. All the way down into the Lowell zone. Crowley. Hounded by Cowan in behind the Lowell net. Crowley maintains possession. Now Cowan is able to take it away. Cowan for Belak from the point. A weak shot. Easily steered away by Kuzino. 30 seconds in the penalty to Scoville. Crowley. Ahead for Sharon, he races into the St. John zone. Sharon on the right side, stripped by Salouy, who plays the puck down ice. Flames wanted a too many men on the close. ice penalty there, as I believe it was Giroux who was heading to the bench, and the puck skipped off him just before he could step foot into the Lowell bench. Haggerty brings it into the St. John zone. The penalty to Scoville is over. Teams are at full strength as Jaguar will cover up, and then Kennedy got knocked down by Belak, and that's going to be a penalty. And the Flames have to realize that they're the team that's in control. They don't have to keep doing this and taking what can only be called silly penalties, and this is another one right here. Belak for roughing at 10.51. Yeah, Kennedy just basically going and taking a little swipe at Jaguar. I don't even think Jaguar raised his head, and Belak 
taking down Mike Kennedy, and he's going to go to the box for two. And once again, as you mentioned, Aaron, uh, really no need for that penalty. Plays over, no harm done. And Belak taking a bad one, and the Flames going to go on the penalty kill once again. A misconception that if someone just looks at your goaltender, you have to go after him. And certainly, these are the playoffs, and you want to make sure that everyone else sucks it up a little bit. And Absolutely. Like you said, Jaguar wasn't all you that offended up. by no. that as well. No, no, and that really, that's not going to affect Jaguar. He's focused, he's on, he let the bag went in already, he's past that, but yet can't take these bad penalties. And uh, continuously, that's what the Flames have done here in the second period. And that's why they're short-handed for the fourth consecutive time in this second period. Power play number seven for Lowell. Belak roughing it 10-51. This is a big kill. Obviously, as Sorokin plays it down ice. Dama Kelly, Landry, and Sharon are the other penalty killers for St. John. Under nine minutes remaining in the second period. Flames three, Lowell two. Sean Haggerty has the puck inside. The Lowell Blue Line. Haggerty in the regular season at 19 goals and 27 assists for 46 points. He's been non-existent in this series. Jackson in the right wing corner plays it off the boards. Kept in by Giroux. He'll move it to Haggerty. He chops it in front, but Sorokin intercepts and brings it up ice. Sorokin ahead for Dama Kelly moving in. Sorokin keeps it in at the line. Now the Monsters have it. Flames got caught up ice. Here comes Lowell. Kennedy moving in. Shot save. Rebound knocked away by Sharon. Kennedy to Jackson, to the point, Sharon loses it, Landry ahead, Dama Kelly. Offside over two lines, but he'll let the puck bounce all the way down into the Lowell zone. So play continues. Flames have got to be careful joining the rush shorthanded. You need to get the puck in deep. They nearly got caught earlier, but that botched offside call. Yeah, we saw that in the Scoville rush, yeah. Stopped the play. That time they did get caught. Jaguar came way out and made the save. Giroux, top of the left circle. Lays it in deep, Scoville gets it to Beijing. He'll flip it ahead to Cowan. Cowan moving in, one against one. Cowan fires it wide into the right corner, and it ricochets all the way to the St. John line. Scoville for Beijing. He'll dump it in deep. 25 seconds in the penalty. 3-2, St. John leads. Lowell attacking from left to right with their seventh power play of the evening. Moving in is Looning, shot saves again, rebound, they score! Orsog with his second of the game, and this thing is tied at three. And we've got the same script writer from last night's game in Fredericton. The home team with a two goal lead can't hang on, and the road team facing elimination has battled back once again. Well, give the Lock Monsters credit, and really a shame on the Flames, bad line change. And the Lock Monsters move the puck up the ice very, very quickly. A sprawling uh, effort by, it looked like Eric Chiron didn't work, went hard to the net. Actually, that might have been Lee Sorkin and the puck out front. And Jaguar making the initial save on the, re on the uh, shot, but the rebound and the uh, Lowell Lock Monsters tied this game up. Momentum once again has swung in favor of the Lock Monsters. That was a tremendous play by Warren Looning as Sorkin was all over him. Wallace and Looning get the assists on Orsog's second consecutive power play goal in the second period. 12.38 is the time. 3-3 is the score. We've got ourselves a game now. And a Lowell win, and we'll have ourselves a series. Hooper behind the St. John net to Belak. Frank Anzalone talked about forcing the Flames to deal with some adversity, and they've got some now. We'll see how they react. Delayed offside against St. John. Lowell controlling in its own zone. Huska moves it to Mike Mater. Mater fires it in. Weird bounce in the corner. Belak was able to play it away from the slot. Cooper gets it ahead to Eglin. Eglin to the Lowell line, plays it for St. Louis. Cooper joins the rush. He's after it into the right corner. Cooper looking in front. Eglin can't get the shot away. Eglin now along the right wing boards. Eglin. Back hands it in behind the net. Saloui skates after it. Brigley's after it as well. Crowley comes up with it for Lowell. He'll send it ahead to Mike Mater. Mater shoots it into the St. John end. Jaguar will leave it behind the net. 6.15 remaining in period two. 3-3 three, three is the score in game number three of this Eastern Conference quarterfinal. The Flames lead the series 2 to nothing, And they were looking good tonight, up 2-1. to one, But penalty problems here in the second period have come back to haunt them. Sheba Turkin. Flips it past Sorokin into St. John's zone. 
Sorokin is back in behind the net. Orsog bodies him. Belak plays it off the boards and it bounces all the way into Lowell territory. Sheba Turkin retrieves it for the Lock Monsters. Sheba Turkin on the left side. Kennedy can't come up with it. Orsog has it. Orsog flipped it to Kennedy. He moves it in deep. Orsog's in there after it. Orsog moving behind the net. Nabokov in front. Backhander doesn't get through. Sorokin will feed it ahead to Dama Kelly. Three on two with Landry and Varlamov. Dama Kelly looking in front for Landry, but it's whacked away by Kuzino, who hasn't had a whole lot to do lately. Now the Lock Monsters gain the St. John line, looning off the bench, back into the neutral zone, skating in, looning, dragged down by Beijin, and Sharon plays it off the boards to the neutral zone. Beijin knocked it out of midair. He collides with Sharon. Beijin back in his own zone, plays it out. Sharon takes a run at him. Bilak absorbs that check. Barlamov moving in on the right side. Barlamov cuts a front shot, save, Kuzino. And Beijin bumped his teammate Scoville. Looning tries to skate away from Chris Clark to the neutral zone. Clark takes him out. Cowan gobbles up the loose puck. Cowan charging in. Cowan in front, shot, save. Puck is loose. The net is off its moorings. And we get a stoppage with 4.41 in the second period. It's 3-3 in game three of the Calder Cup playoffs on Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. There's a penalty against Craig Sharon. So the Flames are going to get a power play. Finally, the Lock Monsters take a dumb penalty. It's been a while. Good job by uh, Cowan of going to the net and Craig Sharon taking him down. Lock Monsters have matched the Flames in shots now. Each team has 20. And the Lock Monsters really, really bringing it on hard here in the second period, of course, uh, mainly due to the penalties that the Flames have been taking. 15-19 is the time of the penalty against Sharon. I would assume it's roughing, and it is. Third power play of the night for the Flames. David Cooper from the right point for Dama Kelly down low. Eglin looking in front. Eglin sends it back. Cooper, shot. Oh, what a save by Cousineau through heavy traffic. He reached out with the left hand and snared that one. Yeah, very good job by Cousineau. And you're right, Aaron. Big traffic in front. I'm not sure how he saw that. But certainly Marcel Cousineau will get down as low as he can. And uh, he did uh, get the eye on that pocket. A good job. No rebound. Put it right in the glove and uh, uh, snuff out a flame chance. Large save here by Cousineau. It comes to David Cooper. And he gets the wow. shot away, and somehow Kuzno is able to make the glove save. David Cooper tied a career high with 42 points this year. That was a career high he set last season with St. John's when he was shooting at Marcel Kuzno in practice. San Luis gets it to Eglin. It bounces along the boards, and it's cleared by Huska. San Luis drops it laterally for Cooper. He has it in the St. John's zone. 25 seconds gone. In the penalty to Sharon. 3 3 is the score. Flames from right to left. Salloway looking for Chris Clark. It's deflected in behind the Lowell goal. Cousineau plays it to the boards. Salloway tried to keep it in with his body, but it's sent out by Orsog, who has both goals for Lowell here in the last few minutes to tie the score. Here's a loose puck. Baudouin, short handed breakaway. Baudouin scores! Nick Baudouin beats Giguerre on the short handed breakaway. Lowell has scored three unanswered goals and they lead it for the first time in the game, 4 3. Well, Nick Baudouin, the Chris Dingman look alike. He's got that, those whiskers and uh, what a good job. Put the deke on Giguerre and went to Giguerre's right side. Put it by him and Lowell jumps into a 4 3 lead. Short handed goal. Big miscue by the Flames at the red line. And Baudouin taking big advantage of that going in and beating Jaguar on the deke. And boy, has the complexity of this game changed. Big goal by Baudouin. And a nice, nice play to beat Jean Sebastian Jaguar. Baudouin was with Hershey 
a couple of years ago when they won the Calder Cup. He didn't play much in the playoffs, but played in 34 regular season games. Last year, he was a member of the Canadian national team. So now the Flames have to play catch-up hockey. Special teams are the difference in this one. The Flames have allowed two power play goals and a short-handed goal, and they trail 4-3. Varlamov to Sharon. Left point for Varlamov, left circle. Varlamov shot. Kuzino the save. And he covers up with 40 seconds remaining in the penalty to Sharon. 3.22 to go in the second period. And the St. John faithful, somewhat stunned Shock, yep. by what's transpired here. It was 3-1 Flames six or seven minutes into this period. And then Lowell scored three straight goals, two on the power play by Orsog, and now the shorthanded gem by Baudouin. Well, give credit to the lock monsters. They've hung in there. The goal with uh, about seven seconds left at the end of the first period. The Flames scored uh, really should have uh, buried these guys, but uh, once again, give them credit. They bounced back, and the Flames really couldn't get any offense going. Playing so short-handed here in the second period, they really haven't mustered much, and uh, someone's gonna have to take charge. Down by one goal, gonna have to get back in this game. Four second period goals for Lowell. It all started on that bad one by Wallace when Jaguar misplayed it in the corner. Landry, deep in the left corner, he's taken down by Cairns and the Lock Monsters were able to clear the zone. 25 seconds remaining in the St. John power play. Flame skate from our right to left. It's Lee Sorokin bringing it up by Sorokin to center. Shooting it in wide of the low goal. Varlamov plays it into the corner for Petrovicki. Petrovicki is hooked. Huska has the puck. He'll move it ahead to Mike Kennedy. Kennedy skating through the neutral zone. Carries it over the St. John line. Kennedy on the right side. Checked by Beijing. Then hit by Sorokin. Sorokin comes up with the puck, moves it in front of his own net for Sharon. He'll give it back to Sorokin. Ahead for Varlamov. Now for Petrovicki, who fires it in deep. Teams are at full strength. Four to three, Lowell leads. They've roared back from a 3-1 deficit in this second period. Here's Orsog. He has two goals. Firing it in deep. Jaeger, who has not been at his best, can't stop it. It rolls into the right corner. Beijing. Ties up his man, and we get a whistle. The backup goaltender tonight is Igor Karpenko. The third St. John goaltender is Danny Sabarin, a junior age goaltender who was drafted by Calgary, 108th overall in last year's draft. He was playing with Val Dor of the Quebec League. They were eliminated, so the Flames opted to bring him in to act as the practice goaltender because he's part of the organization. Jody Lehman, who was here last week, was the top goaltender with the South Carolina Stingrays of the East Coast League this year, and of course, Rick Vive has close ties to South Carolina after spending five years in Charleston, but Lehman has been cut loose, and Sabarin is now the third netminder. Speaking of Quebec Major Junior, what about those T-10? Oh. As Bill Stewart said a few years ago at the Memorial Cup, when you want to buy your team like that. <laughs> they did. <laughs> some friendly dealings. Boy, did they ever. Involving Leo Guy Morissette. Yeah. Some shady dealings is probably a better way to describe it, but whatever it takes, we'll see how they fare at the Memorial Cup. Well, that, that'll be the true test, certainly. Offside are the lock monsters at the St. John line, and it's a good thing because Scoville fell on its fanny. Nick Baudouin was there looking for the loose puck. A minute 57 to go in the second period. Lowell leading this game 4-3. to three. Well, Certainly Lowell have been the most opportuni opportunist team this period, and you have to make your chances, and you have to take advantage of those chances, and certainly that's what they've done. Uh, the Flames have put themselves in a deep hole with these penalties, and really senseless penalties, needless penalties, something that uh, really the discipline factor has to kick in, and you really you have to uh, you have to play for your team, and that just hasn't happened, and uh, certainly they've let, through those penalties, have let Lowell climb back and really take the lead here, and uh, they're in control this game now. Crowley fires the puck into the zone. The penalty that resulted in the tying goal was that silly infraction taken by Bilak. Mm. Here's Sorokin, stepping up and carrying it into the Lowell zone, dropping it. Beijing shot, easily steered away by Cousineau. There's going to be a penalty against Cairns for flattening Clark in front of the Lowell net. So what goes around comes around. Cairns is off, and the Flames will get their second consecutive power play, their fourth of the evening. Well, Chris Clark doing what he should do, and that's go to the net and went to the net hard. And Cairns really needlessly taking him out. We talked about needless penalties, and Cairns takes one for the Lock Monsters right there uh, with a 4-3 lead. You have to play aggressive, but certainly no need of taking Chris Clark down, and the uh, Flames are going to get a chance to jump back in this. 
18-23, the time of the obstruction tripping penalty against Eric Cairns. Lowell leads 4-3. Lowell busting into St. John yesterday, getting in about 6 or 6.30 last night. Their general manager, Tom Rowe, quickly made his way to Fredericton in time for last night's game between the Canadians and the Maple Leafs. If you're watching on TVNB, the sour looks on those Flames fans. <laughs> The direct result of what's transpired here in this second period. Lowell leading four to three. Face off to the top of the right wing circle. The Cousineau's left in the Lowell zone. Eglund wins the draw. Dama Kelly drops it to the right point. David Cooper now right wing boards for Nat. Dama Kelly, Clark to the front of the net. Dama Kelly, the shot skipped off the leg of a defender. Ends up along the boards. Cooper pushes it into the left corner. Clark gets it to Allen Eglund. Eglund moves in behind the net, sends it right corner. Nat Dama Kelly. Dama Kelly for Eglin, back in behind the goal. Eglin now on the left side, gives it to San Luis. San Luis, left circle, to the point. Cooper, shot, glove save, Marcel Cousineau. With a minute seven remaining in the second period, a minute and a half to go in the penalty. Cousineau has made two scintillating glove saves on David Cooper in this period. Yeah, good save by uh, Marcel Cousineau, but the key there is he saw the puck. And uh, with Alan Eglin and Chris Clark, you have to be have to create a little traffic in front. Certainly Cooper has the howitzer back there. He has to keep the puck down, but you're going to have to create some traffic in front of Cousineau. Certainly not give him a, a good eye on the shot, but certainly uh, I like the idea of uh, a little bump, uh, get, trying to get him worked up, maybe get his mind off the game. But as we know, Marcel Cousineau very focused, and it's going to take more than a little bump to get him going, but the, certainly the Flames are going to have to create some traffic in front of Cousineau. Face-off is to Cousineau's Right, 24-21 are the shots in favor of St. John. Sharon for Lowell wins the draw. Giroux plays it in behind the net. Dama Kelly tracks it down along the right wing boards. He's hit by Orsog. Angus allows play to continue even though he brought the whistle to his mouth. He doesn't blow it. Cooper from the right point for Salloway. Moving in, shot scores! As good as Cousino had looked on those glove saves by Cooper, he looked awful on that one. Very little daylight, short side, but Salloui finds it, and it's a power play goal. This thing is tied at four, and it's another goal in the last minute of a period for St. John. Yeah, and you really have to wonder what Mark Marcel Cousineau was thinking on that one. He saw it all the way. He got beat on the AHL side, as they call it, the short side. Good shot by San Luis. Good puck movement by the Flames. But once again, you have to stop that one, especially if you're Marcel Cousineau, veteran goaltender, and uh, you know he'd probably like to have that one back. 19:09, the time of the goal. Martin Salloui with his fourth of the postseason, tied with David Nemirovsky of the Leafs for the lead in that department in the league. Loose puck in the neutral zone. Here comes Buddy Wallace moving in. Shot kicked away by Jiguer. 30 seconds in the period. Eglin and Cooper with the assists on the goal. Here's Dama Kelly racing in. Shot save. Rebound was loose. But Wallace played it away from Barlamov. 20 seconds in the period. Frenzied pace here. 4-4. Looning moving in on the right side over the St. John line. Sharon turned him away. And Landry clears the zone. Crowley plays it away. Landry gets it to Dama Kelly. But offside is Varlamov with 7.6 seconds remaining in a wild second period. Lowell with four goals, St. John with two, and we're even at four. 7.6 seconds remaining in the second period. It's amazing, the Maple, the Lowell Lock Monsters allowing these goals in the last minute. And yeah. again, this is very similar to what happened last night in Fredericton where the home team had a lead. And at least tonight, the home team has come back after the visiting team tied it. But these last minute goals go all the way back to game one. They scored in the last minute of the third period in game two. They scored in the last minute of the second and third periods. And then technically they scored in the last minute of the overtime as well because they won the game. And then in the last minute of the second and third, first and second periods here tonight, as we get a scrum in front of the St. John bench. More than a scrum. Someone put the big old hook on Steve Beijing, and he is not happy. I heard it up there. Look down. And. Someone has him now from behind, and there's a couple of shots. That's Sharon, the Lowell veteran who's lost his helmet. Beijan Sharon trying to mix it up. 
hate these scrums right in front of the bench yeah. if you're an official because you never know what might happen as now Dane Jackson and Jeff Cowan have words. All of this with 2.9 seconds remaining in the period. And Angus is going to be assessing penalties. But a huge second period for Lowell. They score four goals, three in a row. But that late tally on the power play by Salloway is even the score at four. Well, the big goal by the Flames, as we talked about at the end of the first period, certainly looked like they were in control of this hockey game and had. What did Dane Jackson not do sure. just he right looks there? Looks like he might have kind of hit someone in the glove with his stick. Not quite sure. We may catch that on a replay, but uh, Dane Jackson, as you mentioned, Aaron, anything around these benches, certainly anything can happen. And uh, Dane Jackson, uh, mixing up, of course, last week with Steve Bejean, both receiving match penalties. And, Rick uh, Live is upset, and I will be the first to admit I something. did not see what happened. Not sure, but it looked like possibly the Dane Jackson flipped the glove off of somebody's hand with his stick. Not quite sure, but that could very well have happened. Certainly he was in the area, and his stick did come up, and I saw a glove fly. So We'll keep our eye on our monitor here to see if yeah. folks downstairs, for those of you with the benefit of TVMB's, special coverage of the Calder Cup playoffs. We'll see if we can see what happened there, but certainly something happened that wound the Flames bench up. Absolutely. And that was just after I had suggested that scrums in front of the bench can result in problems. If I was Blaine Angus right here, I'd say, boys, go to the dressing room. 2.9 seconds left in the period. I'll sort things out, and we'll tack this on to the third. That wouldn't be a bad idea. So talking about this mistake late in second period, both teams guilty of taking some untimely mistakes. The Flames, of course, taking the penalties and uh, really Lowell taking big advantage of them jumping into the lead at 4-3. Flames with less than a minute left tying this game up on a power play. Good shot by San Luis. Hard shot certainly moved in hard into that side slot area and beating Cousineau on the short side. One that as we've talked about Cousineau probably would like to have back. It's a 4-4 game and it should be a spirited third period. These teams are really uh, developing uh, quite an animosity towards each other. There have been some bad goals in this game. Yeah, sure. There, ha there have. And as you mentioned earlier, and uh, I agree with you 100%, Jaguar hasn't looked like himself. Certainly on the goal, as we talked about it, the, the first of the period that he misplayed. Petr Vicky leading, wow. making his way to the be. dressing room yep. with Brian Miller in tow. And you have to think that perhaps Dane Jackson speared him in the face. He was obviously bleeding with the towel up against his face as we had the benefit of the television camera, which is a pretty cool shot downstairs, yeah. with Petrovicki making his way to the dressing room. And that, I would assume, is what happened. That Jackson whacked him with the blade of his stick, gave him the old spear job on the nose. Well, I saw Dane Jackson's stick come up, and I saw a glove fly off. And that could have very well been Petrovicki's uh, glove reacting to the high stick. Sharon gets a high sticking minor. Jackson gets an unsportsmanlike penalty. Beijing gets a roughing minor. And Oduya gets unsportsmanlike conduct. So Angus has canceled everything out. Fans, as you can hear, disagree. And certainly the fans behind the Flames bench, bench very animated, as is Rick Vive right now. He's not happy at all. And uh, Ron Petrovicki, something happened to him. We're not sure. We'll certainly try to get someone's rendition of what happened to, to uh, Ron Petrovicki. Certainly an important part of this hockey team. What happened to him uh, between periods. And we'll try to pass it along. But uh, he went to the dressing room with Brian Miller. And uh, looked like in a great deal of pain with a towel up towards his face. So something obviously happened. And... Uh, Certainly, we'll try to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, something obviously happened, and it was obviously missed by the officials. Lane Angus, as you know, is one of my favorite referees in this yeah, league. Yeah, sure. Yeah, does a good job for Made the most part. Made a bad, 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 bad call last night in Fredericton in that first period fight, if you can call it that, involving Sylvain Blois and Greg Smith. Smith, who's a veteran, he's been around seemingly forever, doesn't mind dropping the gloves. He bit the bullet trying to goad Sylvain Blouin into a penalty. 
Luan sucker punched him with a couple of right hands. Smith went down to the ice. And I really honestly believe that Blaine Angus didn't see what had happened. And he assessed both players' major penalties. Greg Smith said after the game he was flabbergasted when the calls were announced. He smashed his stick against the boards, and the Leafs wound up being short-handed. But generally, Angus, I still maintain, is one of the better officials in this league, along with your Dan O'Hallorans. Yep, that's popular consensus. Mike Legos and Greg Kimmerleys. But clearly, something was missed right there. Again, you can't necessarily fault the officials, because when you get gloves and sticks up around the bench like that, but. Dane Jackson nearly took Steve Beige's head off in game one on Friday night. So Jackson has a history of this sort of thing. And obviously, Ronald Petrovicki didn't tap himself in the face no. and make himself bleed. Interesting period. Uh, Lowell bouncing back, and you have to give them credit. Certainly, uh, the Flames are going to have to rethink things, uh, taking way too many penalties, undisciplined penalties, but give Lowell credit. Bouncing back, jumping into the 4-3 lead, and the Flames bouncing back less than a minute. As you mentioned, so many late goals in the series so far, but Martin San Luis being Cousineau on the short side, and we're tied at four, and we've got ourselves a pretty good hockey game. Lots of scoring in that second period. It was 2-0 Flames after one. Lowell cut that lead in half at 153. Buddy Wallace with the unassisted goal after Giguere misplayed the puck in the left wing corner. But then Brigley on a beautiful play by Martin St. Louis restored St. John's two goal advantage at 520. Brigley with his second of the playoffs on the 2 on 1 with St. Louis. Eglund also getting an assist. But then Lowell took over on the special teams. Power play goal, five on three variety from Orsog. His first from Giroux and Sharon at 937. Then Orsog with his second consecutive goal, Looning and Wallace the assists. That was a power play tally at 12.38. All of a sudden, this thing was tied at three. And then the shorthanded goal by Baudouin, intercepting a pass at center and skating in and beating Giguere on the deke. An unassisted goal at 16.08, and Lowell had the lead. But then that goal by Salouy, where he beat Cousineau on the short side with a good shot, but certainly Cousineau, if he's playing his angles correctly, makes that save. Salouy's fourth of the playoffs, now tied with David Nemirovsky of the Leafs for the league lead in Calder Cup playoff goals. Cooper and Eglin the assists. That was a power play goal at 19.09, and this thing is knotted at four. Shots 15-13 Lowell. Through two, St. John is out shooting Lowell, 26-22. If you are keeping score, here are the penalties. Varlamov holding at the three-minute mark. Sorek in a double for high sticking at 552. Scoville slashing at 850. Belak roughing at 1051. Craig Sharon roughing at 1519. Clark obstruction tripping at 1823. And then that fracas that had the flames all fired up at 1957. Craig Sharon high sticking. Jackson unsportsmanlike, Beijing roughing, Oduya unsportsmanlike conduct. It is 4-4 through 40 minutes of play at Harbor Station. These are the Calder Cup playoffs on TVNB and on Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. Well, we've got ourselves a bit of a hockey game after one seed the St. John Flames we're going to run away with. 3-1 lead heading into the second period of play. The Lock Monsters have stormed back. Flames with a late goal in the second period, so we're tied at four heading into the final 20 minutes of play. A pleasure to sit down next to Calgary Flames head coach Brian Sutter. Brian, thanks for taking the time up. Good to be here. I think we'll start with, uh, just give us your overview of the first 40 minutes of this game. Well, it's been kind of two different type of hockey games, and uh, obviously our guys got up, and, and uh, there's a bunch of calls made and after the whistle went, and uh, I think they had five straight penalties, and allowed them to get back in the game, and, and uh, then he called a couple against them and allowed our guys to get back in the game, so uh, there hasn't been very much five and five play, unfortunately. Well, I'm sure it's always a pleasure to have you here in town, but I'm sure you'd rather be somewhere else right now. Well, we would be. Uh, we had a heck of a run at it at the end of the year, and we were over two dozen points back out of a playoff spot, and we fought our way back, and, and uh, we ran into some injuries late in the year, and that hurt us, but it, it was good for our young guys. We're very similar to our team here uh, that were young, and our guys got experience the things they got to do, and we'd love to be playing right now, but we made a run for it, and uh, 
they put themselves in a position to be able to do that. Who was your biggest surprise in the lineup? I mean, Perry had a great second half. He came on strong. Freddie Brathwaite coming in between the pipes. To help him when Kenny Reggett was back, was ailing a little bit, really couldn't feel the pitch. Who was the one player that you would say would be the whole total standout for this year? I don't think there's anybody that really stands out. We're, uh, after we made, especially made the trade for Theo, we needed a group and a team. And uh, we were, our younger guys relied on Theo in a lot of situations. And uh, there's a lot of people. Uh, Bury came forward and played really well. Uh, Jason Weimer, Jeff Shantz, uh, Derek Morris, Dennis Gauthier, uh Eric Schron came up and played very well for us. Uh, uh, you got three or four guys playing here that uh, are, are going to play in the National Hockey League, and uh, those are important things. But there was a lot of people on our team. It had to be a team thing, and, and uh, the marketplace we're in, we've got to come and play hard and be tough to play against every night. And we're our young team that are tough to play against every night. Who do you like? hitting into, I mean, when the, it was coming down to those final last five, six games, Edmonton and you still had three games head-to-head to, head to play. The rivalry of Calgary, is that going to, that's one of the things that you guys need to help rejuvenate the, especially with the financial situation in Calgary and in Edmonton. That must have felt good for you guys from a financial standpoint. Well, no question, and that's what it's all about, and unfortunately, uh, every one of those games were tight games, and a referee's call or a non-call or went one way or whatever determined the outcome of a hockey game, a penalty here and there. Uh, but it's important, there's no question about it. Everybody knows the marketplace in Canada and everybody knows what's going on and how hard it is to compete uh, against other, the big market cities and uh, Edmonton and us are both teams that play very hard, very, very similar type of teams. Uh, they talk about their team being young but they've been able to keep some important guys in their team together for four or five years, and that's the difference between our team and theirs right now. Who do you like out on the ice right here from St. John? If you could take a couple players back that are still in the playoffs, who would you like to take back with you? Well, there, there's there's quite a few young guys that are, that are going to play in the National Hockey League if they want to push themselves and want to play hard in tough situations, but uh, certainly a guy that stood out tonight front and center is Steve Bajan. Okay. He's a young man that uh, you need all types. We talk about a team, and uh, He's the type of guy that wants to be out in front. Uh, if he's not pulling the wagon, uh, he's making sure everybody else is pulling it beside him. But uh, he's somebody that if he keeps playing the way he is, he's certainly got a chance to play in the league. Goaltending situation in Calgary next year, of course, Kenny Reagan not getting any younger. Not to say he didn't have a good year. Uh, Freddie Brathwaite, of course, I'm sure will be back. What about Jean Sebastian Giger? Has he got a chance to stick with the big club next year? Well, he got an opportunity to play this year, and uh, uh, he had a chance to stick with it last year. And unfortunately, uh, uh, like every young goalie has got to learn and like he's got to learn in this past period. You can't let one goal in that uh, gets your team in trouble and he lets a, a bad goal in that gets his team in trouble. But he's certainly got the ability to, to play in the National Hockey League. But young guys got to experience that and that's my point. And uh, he got that opportunity too this year and uh, he's capable of playing very well when he played. Uh, uh, he, he played well in some situations as Tyler Moss did, but there are situations where a goal can't go in at a crucial time and put your team behind the eight ball, and uh, that's what they got to learn. And unfortunately, goaltending is a tough position to learn and play in the National League. And it, it, it showed going down the stretch. You asked about Kenny Reagan and Freddie Brathwaite. If we had had those two guys in the net for the whole year, their records over the course of the year, we wouldn't have been fighting for eighth place. We'd have been fighting for fourth or fifth, and that's what their records were. So. Bigger's got a ways to go, but he's certainly got the ability to get there and, and the work ethic to get there. We're going to see Brian Setter behind the Calgary Flames bench next year. Ah, uh, that's up to the owners there. I don't I couldn't really tell you that. I know we've done a good job there with the people we got, and uh, we've come a long ways in the last two years. And uh, uh, actually, uh, I call this year a building year. Last year wasn't. We had to weed out some people, and uh, so we'll see. We worked hard for what we got, and I'm proud of our young team. One final question. I know you're rooting for your brother down in San Jose to make a comeback against Colorado. Who are you looking at the Stanley Cup Finals? Boy, the good teams are from out west, aren't they? No and, uh, question. There's no question. Dallas and, uh, and Detroit, and uh, they're going to be tough to beat. And uh, those teams are are the are the teams that you got to watch out for. Brian, okay, sir. Time. Thanks for having Take me. Take care. My pleasure. Yourself. Tied at four, Moloch Monsters and the St. John Flames after 40 minutes of play, live from Harbor Station. You're watching Flames Hockey on the Nebraska Channel, TVNB. Describe how the goal happened by, uh, describe how Cooper scored his goal. Uh, we had a face-off in their uh, zone, so uh, Landry won the face-off and Cooper just uh, shoot the puck. Yeah, I think it was a 
the puck didn't, uh, the puck stay on the ice and we scored. It was a pretty nice goal. It was a good goal. We, was a, we need that goal. So uh, everybody on the bench was surprised when uh, we scored six seconds left in the third period. So Describe uh, Martin St. Louis' uh, winning goal in overtime and, oh, uh, and the feeling on the bench and in the dressing room after the game. Yeah, uh, we had a penalty. Uh, Lisa Rockham came out the bench and he had a breakaway. He wasn't breakaway. And, uh, I think it's uh, Martin St. Louis came skate all uh, down the, the ice, uh, saw uh, Sorokin break away, so he just tried to get the the, the, the rebound and uh, he tried to make a move and uh, I think so the goalie just uh, are, poke check. just poke check him and uh, St. Louis got the rebound. Everybody was in the was uh, was a great feeling on the bench. We just won on the, on the overtime there on the second game it was we led the, the, the series to nothing so it was a great feeling in the room the the bus uh, we had the bus ride after so eight hours so it was a good bus ride because we won the game so it was uh, it was pretty good what was the feeling like you only won once in Lowell in the regular season and here you win back to back games <coughs> in the playoffs how important were those two games Obviously, the one game you did win meant nothing because it was the regular season. You know, uh, it's in the playoff. It's not the same thing. It's another season. So uh, everybody, we uh, we fixed the things didn't uh, work too good for us during the season. So uh, I think with the good trade we had, so uh, it's pretty good for us. And the two guys, Lee and uh, uh, Bilak and. Um, Oh, Dominic, Dominic, <laughs> Dominic Kelly, sorry, and Dominic Kelly uh, came back from uh, from uh, Saint, from uh, Flames in Calgary, so uh, it was good addict for us. Was two good players, so we need those guys. So, like I said, everybody's back now, so it's not the same things. Another season, everybody's ready to win. Everybody want to compete to win, and that's a good feeling. Everybody in the street now is talking possibility of a Fredericton St. John uh, battle, battle of New Brunswick, Highway 7 battle, whatever you want to call it. I think it's going to be a great, ser a a great series. It's going to be a, another tough series. And I think everybody, I think here in New Brunswick, everybody expects that series uh, to be a, a tough series. And it's going to be the last series against uh, the, the Fredericton because they, they're going to be in Quebec next year. So. Uh, Everybody's gonna. Uh, a lot of people's gonna watch the, this series if we play against Fredericton. Like, it's not done again. It's not done yet. But it's one game left, so uh, you gotta work like us. Uh, yes, obviously, I like to tell the audience that this is recorded ahead of time, so we still don't know who's going to be playing. Who yeah, here we, at, at we the, still don't know yet. Yeah, so we still don't know. So um, it's not over. So it's it's going to be a tough series. The the. the Whatever team survives the yeah, series between Fredericton and St. John is going to be badly bruised up and banged up and is going to need a, a good But rest. I think if we win and we play against Freddy, I think it's going to be tough because, uh, like I said, it's uh, Fredericton, it's a big, um, how you say, like the competition between mm -hmm. uh, those two teams it's in, in New Brunswick, so it's a big war. So I think it's going to be, uh, if we play against uh, Fredericton, it's going to be a tough. Obviously, the focus for uh, Wednesday night's game is to win. But is there any other sort of focus that you guys are concentrating on now? What uh I mean, we have to do the the same thing we played. We played we played well in low. We played pretty good in low well. So we gotta do the same thing. We we can't change the the, the what how we played uh, the the last game because we did well. So we can't change nothing. We gotta play uh gotta play the same a smart a smart game. So try to. Uh, don't take too many penalties like we did, but gotta play uh, play tough. Gotta play. We gotta play in the in the focus. We gotta focus on the the, the game plan. So mm -hmm. this is TVNB, the New Brunswick Channel, only on Fundy. Forty minutes of play. The game is tied at 4-4. Jim, rather physical game at near the end of it. There are a lot of cheap shotting going on in front of the Flames bench. Um, we noticed that um, I think it was Chris Clark went off to the uh, dressing room looking for some medical attention. After that, he got a little chip into the eye there. Also, we saw I can't remember who it is for Lowell that got a little shot in the eye there too with a high stick, and they, you know St. John had to go on a four-minute uh, penalty kill. Yeah, that's what killed them right there. I mean, they gave up two power play goals, a shorthanded goal. That's why this game's tied at four. 
Lowell came out. They didn't lay down. I think the Flames were expecting them to go well. It's three. It's two one. Then it was 3-1 real quick into the second period. They thought Lowell was going to roll over and play dead, but hey, they're not going anywhere. This game's tied at four. We got 20 minutes to go, and if Lowell comes back out pounding the boards the way that they did, hey, the, the subject of this game could change real quick. We could be headed for a game four, no question. Obviously, Rick Five is very upset with the referee and with Blaine Angus. I mean, so is this whole higher station, as you people have been hearing. A lot of boo birds in here tonight, and a lot of people saying a little bit of profanity around there, too, that uh, they just don't really care too much for uh, Mr. Blaine Angus tonight. And they didn't care too much for him in Fredericton last night, either. Yeah, that's true. There was a couple of signs that we got quite a good chuckle out of around about Mr. Angus's call so far tonight. Thing is, when you get into playoff hockey, there's one team that's going to get a little more call than the other team, and you got to expect that kind of thing. Rick Vibe's got to settle the flames down right now. They did get a little too emotional carrying it on their sleeves and that's why they were giving up the shorthanded goals and they gave up the power play goals as well got into a little bit of penalty trouble got to get your head on straight this is a game where if you can put this game away tonight you got yourself at least five maybe six days off before you have to play in the Atlantic Division final Fredericton or St. John's not sure yet but either way get yourself that rest get the mental game come back out keep your head on straight don't let your emotions get the best of you fellow that's uh, really catching my eye Jim is Eric Sarah he doesn't even look like he was sick at all he's playing he's, he's logging in at least a good maybe probably 40 minutes of this game at least for tonight good reason he's got that C on his sweater so far this year because he is playing with a lot of heart and a lot of determination tonight fella I've had my eye on all night is Steve Bejan he's been all over the place playing extremely well playing the good check playing the good pass, trying to set up the plays. Steve Beijing is the man to keep an eye on. He's my call for the game-winning goal. Well, I, I had a chance to talk to Steve Beijing yesterday, and if it goes into overtime, we'll see that interview. But uh, if we don't go into overtime, we won't see that interview. But uh, he's uh, a little hard to understand, but I can converse in French with him, so it wasn't too bad. And uh, he, he's, he was geared up for this game. He said it was a rough style of game in Lowell. He loved that kind of game, and that's what he wanted to play. Quickly, I'd like to mention a, a big congratulations to Sean McLeod going to the NHL in Montreal but not to the Montreal Canadiens. He's going to the National Hockey League Registry, and I was listening to Aaron Kennedy trying to uh, explain what it was. So anyway, we're going to go back to the play-by-play -play now with Aaron Kennedy and Steve Ryan. Both goaltenders, uh, very good goaltenders. Yeah, that's uh, just said You expect yeah, more sure. from these two guys. Yeah, you sure do. And uh, Shiger, the big miscue, that certainly started things for Lowell. And Cousineau, uh, certainly that last goal, you cannot get beat on the short side. Uh, a good shot by San Luis. Certainly that's one that uh, Marcel Cousineau would dearly love to have back. Third period is underway. The Lock Monsters from right to left. Malcock for Orsog gets it into the St. John end. It's in behind the net. Skating after it is Mike Kennedy. Kennedy had it swept away by Cooper. Kennedy gets it back, moves it along the left wing boards for Dmitry Nabokov. He's bodied by Landry. Puck is loose. Orsog tried to send it to the point, but Varlamov intercepts and feeds it ahead to Nat Domichelli. Landry carries into the Lowell zone. He got tripped up, and the Flames are offside with 27 seconds gone. In period number three of game three, this series two to nothing in favor of St. John. 4-4 four, four is the score tonight, and if Lowell wins, game four will be played here at Harbor Station on Friday night at 7 o'clock. Game four in the Fredericton St. John series is tomorrow at 7.30 at the Aiken University Center, a game you can see here on TVNB. Aaron Kennedy, Steve Ryan, Barry Johnson, and Jim Hennessy at Harbor Station. Lee Sork and number 44 in this 4-4 game, back in his own zone, lays it down ice. Skating after it is Varlamov. Giroux is back there first. Varlamov checks him in the left wing corner. Giroux plays it off the glass to the line. Sork and holds it in, moves it to Varlamov. It hopped over his stick in behind the goal. Kuzino will shoot it ahead. Donna Kelly holds in right point. Backhands it behind the net. Varlamov skates after it. Malcock. Moves it for Nabokov. He'll venture in behind the goal as the Flames make changes. Lowell from right to left. Here's Nabokov to center. It's played in deep. And chasing after it is Buddy Wallace. Jaguar fell as he tried to come out behind the net. Eglin 
Flips it ahead. Looning knocks it down. Looning the shot. Right pad saves Jaeger. Puck is up on the netting. Now it bounces free and it's picked up by Saloui. Saloui has the tying goal. Gets it to Eglin who backhands it in deep. There are no game tying goals, however, in the playoffs. Eglin into the corner to Saloui. Saloui back along the right wing boards. Martin Saloui spins away from Baudouin. Fanned on his shot. Broke his stick. And the uh, Hawk Monsters bring it back the other way. Nat Domichelli did that twice over the weekend. Broke two sticks on the same shift. Saloui was trying to put all of his small frame into that one. Saloui with a new stick. Fires it ahead. Petrovicki after it at the low line. Cairns controls. And he'll feed it out to the neutral zone. It's backhanded into St. John territory by Mater. Belak behind the Flames goal. 2-10 gone in the third. 4-4 is the score. The puck is inside the Lowell zone. Ray Schultz has it. Schultz nearly gave it away. Petrovicki races after to the left corner. Petrovicki taken out by Schultz. Cowan is there to help out. Petrovicki can't spot Clark in the high slot. Clark plays it into the corner. Petrovicki in behind the net. Stripped of possession by Schultz. Petrovicki hooks him down. And coming up with it is Haggerty. He'll feed it ahead. Here comes Mater to the St. John zone. He'll fire it in. Jaeger makes a routine save. It's 4-4 in the third. Sorokin has it for the Flames. He'll head up the middle and fire it on net. Kuzino makes the save and plays it for Malcock. Ahead for Nabokov. They get it out to center. Scoville bounces it up vice. It's shot into the St. John zone by Haggerty. Here come the Monsters on a two-on-one, but Nabokov had his pocket picked by Scoville. Back the other way come the Flames. Dama Kelly charging in. Shot saved by Cousineau as Dama Kelly, the left-handed shot, flying in on the off wing, and that one appeared to fool Cousineau, but he made the trapper save. You're right, left-handed shot on the right wing and took it off the left foot, and that gave Cousineau a little bit of trouble. It was end over end. Cousineau smothering it, and uh, Going to get a face off here to his left. Uh, the pretty plays and the pretty passes, I don't think we're going to win this game. Good hard nosed hockey certainly will. Crunch time 4 4 in the third period. Lowell with their backs up against the wall, down 2 0 in the series. And certainly they have nothing to lose except the series. They're going to be going all out. And, uh, you know, I think uh, if they thought that the, you know, they could automatically be tied going in here in the third period, they'd take that uh, any day. And certainly the Flames could say, uh, kind of let this one get away from them uh, scoring that goal late in the first period for that 2 nothing lead and certainly Lowell dominating the second uh, mistake late in second period and I think whichever team is the hungrier certainly it should be the Flames they've got a chance to put away the Lock Monsters here and certainly whichever team is hungrier should win this hockey game. Eric Landry's stick wound up on the Lowell bench and referee Blaine Angus went over to retrieve it. A lot of times in the playoffs you'll see teams put towels over the blades of their sticks when they're standing up in behind the bench because you don't want your opponent to gain any potential advantage with a illegal stick call. Varlamov looked to center it for Landry, but it's broken up by Ray Giroux, who carries it to center and shoots it into the St. John zone. Three and a half minutes gone in period three, four, four is the scores. Belak works it off the tall glass in his own zone. It bounces back in behind the net. Vladimir Orsog stepping in front. It's loose. Zuger is able to cover up. Impressed with Orzog tonight. He's been particularly good uh, on the power play, of course, getting a couple of power play goals. But uh, he's been involved. He's been around the net all night. Uh, as you talked about, you liked him. A uh, good skater. Certainly uh, gifted on the offense. Was up with the Islanders for a while this year. And uh, certainly the Lock Monsters are very, very happy to have him here in the playoffs. 16-19 remaining in regulation time. 4-4 is the score. Will we need a game four? We'll find out. Triple overtime last night in Edmonton as the Oilers season came to an end. Anaheim swept by Detroit. No Buffalo surprise. sweeping Ottawa. The fact that that's a sweep surprises me Absolutely. somewhat. The fact sure. that Buffalo won surprises me not in the least. Wrigley in the St. John zone. Looning forces the puck back into the corner. Wrigley, Scoville and Looning have it frozen long enough Angus to stop play. Out of town in the American Hockey League, as I mentioned, there are two other games tonight. Hamilton is leading Albany 2 to nothing in the first. Kentucky has a 1-0 lead over Hershey. That's also in the first. Both of those series are tied 
at one game apiece. In the NHL tonight, in the second period, Carolina in front of Boston, one to nothing. The Hurricanes lead that series. Two games to one, Ray Shepard has the goal for Carolina. The Leafs and Flyers are tied at two after one. McCarthy and LeClaire for Philadelphia, Barrison and Sullivan for the Leafs, both with power play goals. San Jose at Colorado is a later start. Buddy Wallace taken out of the play at the low line by Salloway. Eglin flips it into the zone. Brigley is after it. Brigley is bothered along the boards by Cairns, who's lost his stick. He broke it, goes to the bench for a new one. Eglin brings it in, but Brigley is offside. Game three was not good for the St. John Flames last year, and this is something that people might have overlooked, but it's up to me to go through the reams of statistical information that we have and come up with some real gems. In last year's playoffs, even though the Flames marched to the Calder Cup final, they lost game three in three of four series. They fell 3-1 to the Maple Leafs in the first round in game three. After winning back-to-back -back games at home, they went to the Rock and lost game three, 3-1. After winning the first two games at home against Portland, they went to Portland and lost 3-1 in game three. And then they lost 4-3 in overtime to Philadelphia in game three here at Harbor Station. The only game three that they won last year was the conference final when they dumped Hartford 5-2 at the Hartford Civic Center. It's 4-4 in game three here. Haggerty's shot doesn't get through, and the Flames turn it up ice. Cowan and Clark, two on two. Clark. Into the Lowell zone, Clark, top of the right circle, shot, blocked, Belak with a blast, save, Cousineau, rebound, they score! Steve Bajan, Flames lead, 5-4, and again, Cousineau does not look sharp on the long shot by Belak, and Bajan is able to tap home the rebound. Well, you're right about that, Aaron, and certainly, he, I, I believe he saw it all the way, he took it up high. Shot by Belak, but really it was a high shot, and it's something that Cousineau has to corral. He has to take cleanly and, and no rebounds. But uh, couldn't handle it whatsoever. Rebound there, and Steve Bajan puts it home, empty net, and the Flames jump into a big 5 4 lead. Steve Bajan, his first of the playoffs, the team's unsung hero during the regular season. Belak and Clark should get the assists at 4 50. Belak atoning for that dumb penalty in the second period that resulted in the goal that made it 3-3 at the time. It's 5-4 St. John. Does Lowell have anything left in the tank? 14 and a half minutes away from elimination. Dama Kelly at the St. John line. Brings it up ice into the Lowell zone. Loses it to Sheba Turkin. Chips it away. Landry in the right corner. Tried to center it in front. Craig Sharon holds him. Landry maneuvering along the boards in front. Dama Kelly is hooked. He gets free. Dama Kelly shot. Rebound. Clark scores. Oh, Kuzi Kuzi lets in another doozy. It's 6 4, St. John. What a great job by Nat Dama Kelly working the puck down low. Didn't give up. Chris Clark also, both being played. Heavily along the boards by the Lock Monsters. Good job by Clark of taking it down low. Don McKelly working at getting the initial shot on goal. And Chris Clark waiting there for the rebound, shoveling it past Marcel Cousineau. Good work by Chris Clark. Good job by Don McKelly. The Flames jump into a 6 4 lead. And there's going to be a penalty. Clark from Dama Kelly at 551. What an effort by Dama Kelly. And again, it's a questionable goal on Cousineau. And it's six to four. As the Flames 
are going to be short. Varlamov for high sticking at 6'11". Well, yeah, Varlamov is going off, uh, cracking Dean Malcock up high, but the, we talked about earlier, talked about the first period, how well Donna Kelly was skating. Certainly the NHL uh, scouts and people in the stands certainly is going to make him uh, put that little extra effort, not saying that he wouldn't on a regular basis, but uh, really started out here in the third period doing a very, very good job. And he worked the puck down low very well. And Donna Kelly hasn't had a lot of scoring chances up to the third period, but he certainly uh, made the best of what he could there, working the puck down low and the low defense all over him. And as we mentioned, Chris Clark getting the rebound. Clark, he's been good tonight. He does what he does best, and that's get in front of the net. And he'll pick up the garbage, and he did so just there. Cousineau was bad in game one. He was great in game two. And he's bordering on bad here in game three. You have to keep in mind those two big saves he made on David Cooper in the second period. And a lot of people point that out and say, those were big saves. But how about some of the goals? They're just awful. Absolutely. A goaltender of his caliber has to make the big saves at the right time. And uh, he just hasn't done it tonight. And that's why his team is 13 minutes and 45 seconds away from elimination. It's 6 to 4, St. John. Flames are short handed for the eighth time in the game. Lowell's special teams have been good. They're 2 for 7 with the man advantage. Flames are 2 for 4 with the man advantage. Lowell has a short handed goal. Giroux blasts it in, picked up on the left wing boards by Warren Looning. Looning. Drops it for Sharon. Back to Looning, top of the left circle. Looning, waiting, looking, dishing it off. It comes back to Looning. Again at the top of the left circle. Shot, skips through Eric Sharon. Skates, but right to Steve Bejean, who flings it. Down ice. Good discipline box by the Flames. Good job on the point, man. Do not let those shots get through. 13 minutes remaining in regulation time. St. John 6. Lowell four in game three. Sharon for the Monsters, shoots it in. Kennedy on the right side, loses it. Scoville looks to clear. Can't, Sharon, Crowley, one-timer. Saved by Jaguar, rebound for Baudouin. He can't corral it. Salloway brings it up ice with Eglin. Salloway over the line, shot, saved by Cousineau as he stuck out the left pad and made the stop. Eglin had gone to the bench. Salloway was on his own. Now Wallace moves in offside. 12-26 remaining, 6-4 St. John. Well, good job by the Flames, really showing some offense, and I think that was part of the problem. Of course, you had the penalty problem in the second period. They couldn't generate a lot of offense, and always having to sit back and really try to play some defense. But a good job by Martin San Luis. He's played a very, very strong game tonight, a power play goal, two assists so far, and he's been uh, all over the ice. He will generate those scoring chances. Certainly a great set of wheels and uh, very creative on the offense and uh, has done a very, very good job so far here tonight. 36 seconds to go in the penalty to Varlamov. Malkoff drives the puck into the St. John zone. Sorkin has it and he flips it out. Picked up at center by Malkoff. Malkoff moves it to Nick Baudouin. He drops it at the lower line for Crowley. Crowley back for Baudouin into the zone. Wallace. I didn't think he was offside, but Derek Doucette did. Might have got the back foot up a bit, but uh, as you mentioned, Derek Doucette deciding to make that call. Flames that we talked about really can't sit back. Up 6-4, you have to still generate a little bit of offense. You have to keep Lowell honest. This is a team with not a lot of goal scorers, as evidenced by their total goals. I think they uh, were only better than Portland in the Atlantic Division this year. But, uh, certainly the Flames can't take them for granted. You have to stay out of the penalty box. That's the key that we talked about in the third period. This team is hungry right now and really has the edge on the Lock Monsters. Lowell is a team that really doesn't know how to play mm. when it's behind. Trap, trap, trap is the motto of the Lock Monsters. Eric Cairns at the Lowell line for Crowley. He slaps it in. Back to pick it up is Eric Sharon. It comes to Dama Kelly. And he clears it down ice as the penalty to Varlamov expires. Lowell two for eight on the power play. The puck is backhanded into St. John territory. Belak is back to pick it up behind the goal. He moves it for Cooper. Cooper flips it to center, hustling after it is Salouy just onside, dropping it for Eglin. Eglin for Salouy, Brigley! Oh. oh, he missed an open net! Travis Brigley had a wide open net on a great feed from Salouy, and he couldn't score. I'm convinced Salouy was offside at center. 
Salloway now in behind the net for Brigley. Brigley from the right corner. Brigley in front looking for Eglin. That's broken up and played down ice by Lowell. Icing is the call as Belak is back to pick oh. it up. <laughs> I thought Saint-Louis was offside like at center sure. for sure. And then they turn it into a three on two and Brigley can't tap it in on Saint-Louis. Brigley a great pass in the second period that was a goal. That one should have been a goal and that might have been lights out. Yeah, certainly Eglin started it, uh, dished off to the left side to Saint-Louis and a good job. Holding on to it for a second, Kuzno making the move, but uh, looked like Travis Brigley was just in a little too deep, and even with that long reach that Brigley's got, he didn't have a stick firmly on the ice, and uh, Brigley lets one get away from him there. Quick straw poll in the press box shows that Chuck McTagg's the only person in the building who thought that wasn't offside at center ice. Of course, his opinion is the only one that really matters. Lowell might have been hopping had that gone in, though. Scoville is back in the St. John zone. Controlling behind the net with 10.40 remaining in regulation time of game three. Cowan plays it in. Beijan chips it past Malcock. Beijan in front! It was redirected inadvertently by Giroux and it just missed the left post. Now Beijan turning in the high slot, sending it into the left corner. Malcock comes up with it. Malcock turns and sends it to center. Scoville. Knocks it away from Craig Sharon. Clark hits his man, Vladimir Orsog, rather heavily in front of the St. John bench. Scoville gives it to Sorokin, who plays it to the low line. It's controlled there by Crowley. He does a 360, moves it for Cairns. 10 minutes remaining. Cairns to center, shoots it in. He hadn't gained center. This isn't icing, however, as Dom Kelly couldn't touch it. Crowley point shot, saves Jaguar. Now Dom Kelly comes up with it, and here he comes, wheeling up ice, three on two, over the line for Barlamov. Weak shot, save Kuzino, who covers up with 9.44 remaining in the third. 6 4, St. John. These are the Calder Cup playoffs. Baxter's Wayne Talkie on Country 94. Aaron Kennedy, Steve Ryan, Barry Johnson, Jim Hennessy at Harbor Station at 6-4 St. John with 9.44 remaining in regulation time. Faceoff is to the left of Marcel Kuzino, who has been far from razor sharp in this one. The Mark MacArthur might get the start tonight. Certainly Kuzno is their number one guy, but MacArthur has had a lot of success against the Flames this year. This is icing against Lowell as Belak is back for the touch. I thought that that strategy might have been employed prior to the start of game two. I wouldn't have agreed with it, mind you. Kuzino was not very good in game one, but I but thought that good if you're Frank Anzalone, you have to come back with him in game two. And then if you lose game two, you probably could have played him tonight, but he was so good in game two that you had to come back with him. If you play MacArthur in game two and you lose, then what if you do? Then you have nothing left because you've used both of your goaltenders and you're down 2 nothing in the series. Well, they pay these coaches the big bucks, exactly. I guess, for those decisions. But uh, that would have been a tough call, but certainly MacArthur did play very well. Remember a game December, I think it was 29th or 30th, that he played here at Harbor Station, shut down the Flames, and he was the story of that game. Yeah, 48 saves that night. He shut out the Flames twice this season, 3-0 on both occasions, once here at Harbor Station and once at the All E Songus Arena in Lowell, Massachusetts. And if the Lock Monsters don't get three goals here at some point, they're going to be turning off the plant there. Belak gets it out to center. Nine minutes remaining. The Monsters are going to be called for another icing. As Belak is back for the touch, it is 6-4. St. John with the lead. David Cooper has a couple of assists tonight for St. John. Chris Clark has a goal and an assist. Martin Saint-Louis has a goal and two assists. Alan Eglund has a goal and an assist. As I just quickly try to tally up the damage, 
Vladimir Orsog has two goals for Lowell. Buddy Wallace has a goal and an assist. Those are the multiple point producers tonight. Travis Wrigley has one goal. By right, should have had two. Cool. Face off is to Cousineau's right. Puck is in behind the Lowell net. Schultz falls. Sheba Turkin comes up with the puck. Sheba Turkin sends it to center. Sharon back inside his own line. Sharon moves it for Scoville. Scoville brings it ahead, gives it to Landry into the Lowell zone. Landry moving in, shot. That one's wide. Hustling to hold in is Sharon. He'll play it in behind the net. Varlamov comes up with it on the right wing boards, content to flip it into the corner. Landry hits Schultz. Puck is loose. Varlamov has it. There's going to be a penalty against Ray Schultz. Jig air to the bench. Varlamov tried to send it to the point, and now Schultz is just getting stupid. And Jeff Cowan says to Sergei Varlamov, stay right away from him. With 8.24 remaining in regulation time. A good job by Eric Landry. Good pressure by the Flames right there. At least San Luis and Eric Landry. But uh, good job by Landry of staying away from Schultz. And uh, certainly the Flames with a two-goal lead there. No sense in evening that up. Ray Schultz taking the penny, and the Flames are going to go on the power play once again. Schultz for roughing, three, Schultz, roughing line. at 11.36. We've talked about how Eric Landry can be very, very feisty, and at the first year, he took some bad penalties. But as of late, he's been playing a lot smarter. We had almost 200 minutes in penalties last year, had around 160 this year. But uh, Eric Landry, uh, certainly a great set of wheels, and very happy to be playing on the line with Dermot, Donna Kelly and Barlamoff. And certainly when you have that firepower, and certainly your number one line, but uh, he's played a lot smarter of late and certainly is a, a big reason this team is uh, having having the success it is now. Eglin, Salloway, Clark, Cooper, Sorokin, power play unit, face off to Cousineau's left. And the fans are agitated here that the face off's taking too long. They should have been in Lowell on oh, the weekend. We heard. <laughs> oh, ungodly. As Crowley sends the puck all the way down, it was a knuckleball that Jaguar had to be careful with. It was ridiculous on the weekend in Lowell. Convinced they were under instructions to eject at least one centerman per draw. Well, waving people out in the neutral zone, that's uh, it's a little over the top. Ridiculous. Ludicrous. Lowell clears the zone, under eight minutes remaining. St. John on the verge of advancing to the second round of the Calder Cup playoffs. They have never lost in the second round of the Calder Cup playoffs, ever. Cooper shoots it in. Eglund is in there after it on the right side. He gets it in behind the net. Clark for Eglund, swept away by Malcock. It ends up in the left corner. Malcock drops Eglund to the ice, so then Eglund trips him up. Eglund has the puck to the point. Salloway, Cooper, shot! Off a stick into the left corner. Salloway is there, chops it in behind the goal. Clark gets it to the right corner. Eglund back behind the net, intended for Clark. But Ray Giroux intervenes and brings it up ice on a three on two. Lowell shorthanded. They can afford to take some chances down by two. Baudouin gets it in deep. Baudouin in front. Cairns waits. Oh. Poked away by Sorkin. Cairns looking for the perfect shot. And he had outweighted Jaguer, but it was Sorkin who knocked it aside. Yeah, way, way too much of equipment by Jaguer on that one. And he still doesn't look comfortable there tonight. Orsog steals it from Landry, turns and fires it wide. 27 seconds in the penalty to Ray Schultz. 6.47 in the third. St. John 6, Lowell 4, game three at Harbor Station. Cooper brings it to center. Cooper loses it. Craig Sharon has it. Controlling in the neutral zone, carrying over the St. John Blue. Sharon moving along the left wing boards. Tried to backhand it ahead. Brigley knocked it down. Gets it to Varlamov, teams at full strength. Make the Flames two for five with the man advantage. Flames can't get it out of the zone. Monsters, down by two, are doing everything they can to create some offense. They're being outshot 35-27. Sharon for Nabokov on the right side. Nabokov drops it down low looking for Sharon, but Scoville intercepts, and he plays it ahead for Varlamov. This was nearly a two-on-one, but Scoville elects to back off. Puck is loose in the crease! Oh, Cousineau got a piece of that one with the trapper, and it was on 
the goal line or very close to being on the goal line in the blue of the crease and Cairns knocked it away. Again, Cousineau just waving at some pucks here and very, looking very un like and getting jeered as he stops that long dump in. Marcel Cousineau five and a half minutes away from shaking hands with Eric Landry for the third consecutive year and saying, nice series, Lands. Good luck in the next round. Good shot by Barlamov, but I mean, that's a shot that uh, you know, some industrial league goaltenders make it look uh, very easy. But uh, Cousineau, as you mentioned, Aaron, uh, time and time again tonight, just hasn't been guarded. How bad would that have been had oh. it bounced well, in? Yeah, that's, that's uh, say goodnight to Fahrenheit, the bottom line there, but uh, it stayed out. It barely stayed out, so the Lowell Lock Monsters still live down by two with five 30 left here in the third period. Hot fudge, caramel, pecans, DQ soft serve. It's the new pecan mudslide treat at Dairy Queen. 50 cents from each pecan mudslide sale will be donated to the IWK Children's Hospital. And in five and a half minutes, it's possible the Lock Monsters might be dining at DQ and enjoying their summer vacation. You're giving it to them tonight, big boy. 6-4, <laughs> St. John with the lead. Belak with the puck, flips it into the left corner. Belak's... Got it in deep, and Brigley skates after it. Salloway from behind the net. Salloway dancing around. Salloway in front, backhand, save, rebound! Oh, Just past the right post. I thought the net was going to come off its moorings, but it stayed in position. Five minutes remaining. Lowell down, six to four, down two love in the series. Here they come to center. Kennedy to the St. John line. Kennedy shot, Jigger the save, and he covers up. 4.51 remaining, Flames lead 6-4. These are the Calder Cup playoffs, Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. From the faceoff in the St. John zone, Chris Clark steps in behind the net, sends it on the outlet left side for Beijan, who plays it in. Cousineau gets mocked again as he flips it to the corner. It's picked up by Orsog. He'll play it behind the net for big Eric Cairns. Lowell from right to left, down by two. Jackson sends it in. Four and a half to go. Chiron behind the St. John goal, has it for the flame. Chiron tied up. Puck is loose, it skips into the left corner. Jackson plays it for Craig Sharon. Sharon ventures in behind the net, centers it. Eric Sharon tried to play it away, but I believe it bounced off of Orsog towards the net, and Jaguer had to make an alert stop. Yeah, good alert play by Jean-Sebastien Jaguer, and uh, we talked about the goaltending, been questionable tonight. They both haven't been on their game. I mean, there's been mistakes by both teams tonight, but uh, certainly the Flames in control here. 6-4, 4-15 left in this period in the game, possibly. But they're gonna to have to be careful down low. Certainly Lowell has nothing to lose. They have to send out everything, all the troops now, and do what they can. They're gonna to have to press. Flames may take advantage of that, but certainly uh, there is no tomorrow for Frank Anzalone and his lock monsters if they don't do anything here in the last 4.15. Has to be disappointing for that man, Marcel Cousineau. Mm. He's the ultimate competitor, one of my favorites. He's been in this league as long as I have. Enjoyed watching him over the years, and this has been far from a banner performance for him. Barlamov plays it off the glass, down ice. Here's Landry sprinting after it. Giroux got there first and knocked it away. Kennedy cuts away from Nat Domichelli, who has seven shots tonight for St. John and has my vote for first star should the Flames win. Here's Novakov moving in. That one skipped away from Looning, and Domichelli turns it up ice. San Luis is also worthy of star consideration. Absolutely. With a goal and two assists. Looning backhands it for Craig Sharon. He'll bring it up ice. Sharon chips it to the line. Broken up by Belak. Now Kennedy gets it in behind the goal. Three and a half minutes remaining in the third period of game three with St. John up six to four. This might be an icing against Lowell as Crowley can't spot Orsog with the pass. Crowley frustrated, barks as 
as the faceoff will come all the way down to the right of Marcel Cousineau. Six to four, St. John leads. Fredericton and the Leafs play tomorrow night at 7.30 from the Aiken University Center here on TVNB. The winner of that series will play the winner of this series. If the Flames win this series tonight, we know for sure that the second round will be in either St. John's or Fredericton. Both of those teams finished higher than the Flames during the regular season, and they would hold home ice advantage. Eric Cairns has it for the Lock Monsters. Cairns brings it through the neutral zone, flips it in. Orsog was trying to pick some cherries in behind the St. John defense, laid off the boards, and Brigley gets it out. Three minutes left. 6-4 Flames. Puck deep in the St. John zone. Eric Charon sends it off the glass. Cairns can't hold in. Eglin tried to work it up ice for St. Louis. Now Buddy Wallace is bumped by Eglin. St. Louis gets it into the Lowell zone. Brigley is in pursuit. But Crowley comes up with it, and we'll keep our eye on Marcel Cousineau. Don't be surprised Frank if he to goes to the early. bench yep. very early. Nabokov on the left side, in behind the net for Eric Sharon. Sharon plays it down ice. Two minutes, 25 seconds left in the Flames with a 6-4 lead. And Marcel Cousineau is going to follow his troops to the bench as they get the puck in deep. Empty net to our right. Flames lead 6-4. The puck is in the neutral zone. Ray Giroux has it for Lowell. He'll flip it ahead. Jackson slaps it to the St. John line, but it hit either the glass or the linesman and didn't go in. So it's an offside call against Lowell with 2.08 remaining in regulation time and possibly the season for the Atlantic Division champion, Lowell Lock Monsters. Well, we know how uh, tough it was for Lowell down the stretch, really. Uh, it was a battle when it looked a month, a month and a half ago that this team was going to walk away with first place. And it really came down to the final weekend. And they were having a very hard time of it. Got some players back from the Islanders, six in total. Not all of them playing here tonight, but the bottom line is that the, this team uh, is a good team, but it's not as good at right now as the St. John Flames, and that's what counts. The Flames, of course, getting some uh, help the trade deadline. We've talked about it, and certainly the addition of Don McKelly and Belak after the Calgary Flames ended their season, I think, really solidified this team and, and gave it the leadership it needed. Lowell stretches Nemesnikov, Watt, and Korolev. Kuzino goes back towards the net. He's between the circles. Craig Sharon now controlling in his own zone. Two minutes to go to Kennedy. He gets it into St. John territory. Sorokin with a chance to clear, and he flips it into the penalty box area. The St. John scratches tonight. Only one change from Saturday. Sean Barron's Derek Walzer, Matt Odette are still out. Artu Keiko, who played in games one and two, is replaced by the captain, Eric Sharon. Should also mention regarding Matt Odette, he's back skating and practicing with the team in recovering from that broken left thumb. He's still a ways away, but he's able to shoot the puck and skate with the team and feeling like he's a part of the team. He is on the Flames' clear day playoff roster and is eligible to play in the postseason. Yeah, that was tough, Matt, suffering that injury, and he was playing very well up till then. And uh, that's just one of those breaks, but certainly uh, I'd like to see Matt back in the lineup. He certainly brings some toughness to this team. 153 remaining in the third. The Lock Monsters control the faceoff, but they can't keep it in at the St. John line. Six to four is the score in favor of St. John. Empty net to our right. Looning in behind the St. John goal. It comes to Kennedy. Craig Sharon pinches in from the left point. Sharon moves in behind the net, drops it for Nabokov. Back for Sharon. Sharon in front, shot! Jaguar got a piece of that one. Nabokov centers it. Jaguar knocked that one away. Beijing behind the net, can't come up with it. Nabokov in front, Orsak shot is blocked by Sorkin! Throwing his body in front of that one and taking one for the team. Flames try to clear. Kept in by Nabokov. Now Beijing gets it out. Looking for the open net. It'll bounce just wide, and this will be an icing as Ray Giroux is back for the touch with 70 seconds remaining in regulation time. And Lowell, without question, is going to take a timeout here. It's St. John 6, Lowell 4. 70 seconds left, perhaps, in the series. These are the Calder Cup playoffs. You're listening to Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. Here 
it really looked like the Flames had this thing in hand when they scored that late goal in the first minute to take a 2-0 lead, but then that bad goal on the missed cue by Jean-Sebastien Giguere that allowed Buddy Wallace to score into what was basically an open net early in the second, made it 2-1. Wrigley restored St. John's two-goal lead at 3-1 to one on that nice two-way two-on-one with St. Louis, but then Lowell scored three straight goals to take the lead, but then that late power play goal St. Louis beating Cousineau on the short side in the second period, tied it, and it's been basically all St. John here in the third period as they have outshot Lowell 12 to eight for the game. They're outshooting Lowell 38-30. There's a minute and 10 seconds left. Faceoff is to Jaguar's left. The Flames lead six to four, looking for their first ever playoff sweep. The Flames have never swept, nor have they been swept. From the faceoff, Giroux controls. He plays it in behind the net for Nabokov. Nabokov tried to center. Sorokin knocked it away. Nabokov along the left wing boards with a minute to go. To the point. Giroux broke his stick as he went for the one-timer. Looning behind the net for Kennedy. Eric Chiron tried to play it away. Looning knocks it down for Nabokov. 48 seconds remaining. He's checked by Chiron. There's going to be a penalty. Lowell controls. They should give the puck away. Lowell still has it. It's centered. Kennedy can't get the shot away. Now Giroux with a shot. Sharon fires it wide. Give the puck up, boys. What are you doing? 30 seconds left. It's out to the neutral zone. Now they'll play it in, and the Flames will touch it, and we'll get a stoppage with 24.8 seconds left. Obviously, in that situation, you have yes, to give the puck absolutely. up and go to work with only four skaters on the ice as opposed to five for St. John. Not a good play, but this team really hasn't been in sync all night. They made the big spurt in the second period. But, uh, certainly that was just a bad mental lapse on the part of the Lock Monsters. And certainly they uh, wasted a lot of time and they need two goals. Eric Sharon roughing at 19.35, it's the ninth power play of the night for the Lowell Lock Monsters. I really think it's too little too late. Not quite just under 25 seconds left here in the third period. Lock Monsters down by two. And they're certainly, they're gonna get the power play. And Cousineau is out of the net, so they'll have a two-man advantage. But uh, just as we said, I think it's too little too late. Certainly they're gonna have to win the draw. They're gonna have to win it quick. Get a shot on goal quick and go from there. Face off is to Jean-Sebastien Giguere's left. Landry to take the draw against Mike Kennedy. Landry has been brilliant on the face offs. Winning the big ones. Sure has. They don't come much bigger than this one. Landry ties Kennedy up. The puck comes to the point. Craig Sharon shot wide. Off the end boards in front. Loose puck. Orsog can't knock it in. And the Flames looking for the open net. It goes just wide. But there's no icing. They're short-handed. Ten seconds left. And on their feet. Offside is Lowell at center. 6.3 seconds left. But the Lowell Lock Monsters, winners of the Atlantic Division in the regular season, stumbled and bumbled their way to the finish line, winning just two of their last 12 games. And if you thought those guys coming down from New York was going to help this team in the playoffs, you were sorely mistaken. The Flames with chemistry, with excitement, and 6.3 seconds away from their first ever playoff sweep. They were by far the better team in this particular series. A great series last week and a great couple of games in Lowell. We heard it on the, on the radio and it was a great job by everybody. Uh, Lee Sorokin, uh, Donna Kelly, Landry, San Luis, certainly Jaguar played well. And uh, other than the second period blimp, they've done a great job here tonight. And this is a team well deserved a victory here tonight. The Flames do the match. They do the Lock Monster match. This series is a sweep. Six to four. The final at Harbor Station as the Flames jubilation as they surround Jean-Sebastien Giguere. Nothing but frustration for the Lowell Lock Monsters. Frank Anzalone and Rick Five shake hands. Longtime rivals in the East oh, yeah. Coast Hockey League. And you know for sure that Five enjoys that <laughs> handshake here tonight. And one of the cool things in professional hockey, they don't do this in baseball, you shake hands after the series. 
and Marcel Cousineau, a veteran of these playoff wars, now shaking hands with Eric Landry for the third straight year. Landry's team has eliminated Cousineau's team from the Calder Cup playoffs. And in the last two years, Eric Landry's team has advanced to the Calder Cup final. By the way, if you have purchased tickets for game two in this series, home game number two, game four in the series, they are no good. You have to take them back to Harbor Station for a refund because there will not be a game at Harbor Station on Friday night. So take those tickets back. That is only for individual game tickets. If you purchased playoff season tickets, you do not need to worry about that. So the St. John Flames are going on the road to either Fredericton or to St. John's. They will open the first round of the Eastern Conference semifinals. The first two games will be played either in Fredericton or in St. John's at a date and time to be determined. The Leafs are hanging around after a big overtime win last night. 3,279 on hand tonight at Harbor Station as the Flames sweep the Monsters 6-4 and 3-0 in the series. The three stars tonight, the third star is Vladimir Orsog, and be sure that the first two, two stars will be Flames. And Nat Domichelli is star number two. And the first star with three points, a goal and two assists for Martin Salloway. You really can't argue with that. Orzog, I thought, played a good game for the Lock Monsters. Couple of power play goals and was very, very good in the second period. Don McKelly was all over the ice. Good offense. Played some pretty good defense also. He was really back in his own zone and really didn't make any mistakes. And that was the key to the Flames in the first period. I thought they played some great defense. Uh, Martin San Louis had a great game. He was buzzing all night and got a couple of big, very uh, important points. Uh, certainly the goal that he got uh, brought the Flames out in front again. And, you know, Martin San Louis. He's the type of guy that really he can lead by example. When you see him buzzing around out there, I think it picks up everybody else on the team. And uh, he did a very, very good job tonight. Certainly deserve it of the first star. ABC, one, two, three. The Flames sweep the Monsters. Did you see that? Three consecutive wins, 6 4 tonight on home ice as the St. John Flames post their first ever playoff sweep. Did you see that as a presentation of the Color Center? Your West Side Benjamin Moore dealer in West Wind Place. The Color Center is your MVP of the decorating game. We hope you've enjoyed this one tonight. For those of you listening to us on Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94, we don't know when we'll be back on the air, but we know it'll be from either Memorial Stadium in St. John's or the Aiken University Center in Fredericton. How fitting road. would that be? <laughs> One final spin in the Battle of New Brunswick. The Flames have held up their end of the bargain. They sweep the Monsters with a 6-4 win tonight in Game 3 at Harbor Station. For Steve Ryan, I'm Aaron Kennedy. Thanks for listening to the Calder Cup playoffs on Baxter's Flames Hockey on Country 94. And for those of you watching on TVMB tonight, we send you downstairs to Jim Hennessy and Barry Johnson. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a 6-4 final here at Harbor Station tonight. The Flames over the Lowell Lock Monsters. They beat the Lock Monsters, who were the first place team in the Lane Division, but didn't show it out here in the last, well, tonight anyway, in the two games previous in Lowell. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, when they end up again with a 3-5, and five, a losing record against the Lock Monsters in a regular season, you'd figure there'd be a little bit better of a fight. But you look at the first two games in Lowell, one goal in the first game, overtime in the second game, bit of a blowout here in the third period. Lowell just kind of sent in the, sent in the ship. Said that's it, we're all done for the year. And you know, it evidently showed out there. Steve Bejan with the winning goal. You so called it. You called it. One for one so far. <laughs> the Pro Line picks will be on the show coming up this Sun or this Monday at six, I should say. No, I'm just kidding about that. Nice job by the Flames. Rick Five and Jeff Perry, big pat on the back. Got the boys in there in the second period during the intermission. Told them, got to settle yourself down, got to get it under control. Want to get this series over with. So now it's the waiting game. Fredericton or St. John's, that's who it'll be next. Well, ladies and gentlemen, have to stay tuned uh, tomorrow night to find out who they will be playing. It could be Fredericton. Fredericton wins tomorrow night. And if a St. John wins, St. John's, they're back to the rock for game five, which Fredericton I don't think wants to do because St. John's will have the momentum in their favor going into their barn. Also tonight, I like to berate Blaine Angus because I was absolutely brutal refereeing tonight. 
Um, my friend David Cooper played a real good game tonight, I thought. My he, friend. He, <laughs> oh, now he's your friend. Well, I'd be right in him, you know, now, you know, pull a Don Cherry here. So, but anyway, no, Blaine Angus, I think, was absolutely horrible tonight. Last five, six minutes of the game, put the whistle in his pocket. He didn't call nothing well, until, uh, until the last less than a minute left in the period. And then Lowell should have given the puck to give it a 6 4, you know, 6 on 4 instead of a 6 on 5. And the, the uh, guy who was doing the back and forth communicating between the bench and upstairs. He's, he looked at me and said, you were right. And I said, yeah. well, give me the headset. Well, the thing I can't figure out is, I mean, there's under five seconds left on the clock, and all of a sudden, you know, Angus is calling the, uh, a two-minute minor against uh, Eric Chiron. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. Rick Five a little upset about that, but it's water under the bridge at this point. Now they build, wait, see who they're going to play, and like we said, it's going to be a great game tomorrow night from the Aiken Center. Obviously, the bodies are going to get this well-deserved rest. They're going to get at least probably five days now out of this, possibly six if it goes back to the Rock, maybe seven. They're really going to need that. Sharon can use that to get his, his uh, weight back up again. And obviously, there's some bang bodies in there tonight because they did a lot of banging. Steve Bajan should have been the first star on my mind, but well-deserved to St. Louis. Dominic Kelly, second star, which was well-deserved, too. He's a great improvement and asset to this team. Yeah, the one thing I might say, if the Flames had a chink in their armor at all tonight, Jean-Sebastien Giguere looked a little shaky sometimes, maybe going out a little too far to play the puck. Defensemen had to get back and try to scoop up the save, and a couple of times that they did, good thing that they did, too, or we would have been going into overtime. But Luckily, we're not doing the Dallas and Edmonton thing, Edmonton thing like they did last night. There's no way I'm staying here till 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Forget it. Well, I'm glad they did. They you know got it over quick, and there was two quick goals. They were about a minute apart, and they were real nice goals, too. Could have had a third one. I believe it was Eglin. Couldn't put the finishing touches on it at the side of the net. But, oh, well, 6-4 is the final. Everybody's going home happy here tonight. And to stay tuned for tomorrow night, Thursday night, Fredericton against the St. John's Maple Leafs in Fredericton. We'll be coming to you live from the Aiken Center. From, from uh, <laughs> sorry, Jim Hennessy. I'm Barry Johnson. Thank you, Aaron Kennedy and Steve Ryan. Good night. Bye. See ya.